Hey there, geeks. I'm Kevin Andrew Rivera. And I'm Raul Ceballos. You're listening to Real Geek News, a monthly podcast where we geek out about movies, TV, and streaming. We got a month's worth of news to talk about, so without further ado, let's get geeky. Raul, I am so surprised that this month we actually have a lot of cool stuff to talk about because I thought, I figured that D23 was going to take up most of it. Yeah. Yeah. But then more stuff came up after it. So, wow. Because I know with San Diego Comic Con, we did our own dedicated show episode for that. And then when we ended up doing our, our end of the month July episode, I think it was July, we had like very little to talk about. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy, we got some news. Yeah. Some really I'm, cool stuff this month. I can't believe that after D23 talked about the things that they talked about or they showed us the things that they showed us, we still got more Disney and Marvel stuff afterwards. Yeah, so we did. We're going to talk about all that today for all you listeners. Hello there. What's up, listeners? Even though you can't respond back to us, yeah, feel free just... to t- talk to your your car speakers or phone or wherever you happen to be listening. You're just yeah, sitting Kevin. there, sitting there with your butts on the chair and just listening to our voices. Thinking, or s- or, or screaming at us in case you just hate the sound of our yeah, voices, which some like... of you might be doing. They're just going, go, just talk about your topics. What happened this Come month? On, get Raul, into it already. Come what on, do you what think you happened this month, Raul? I don't what, even know. What happened what, this what month? What did happen this month? Oh, we're <laughs> going to get, we're going to get to the big thing. What do we got, my dude? Let's do this. For end. all you listeners, Let's topic number one, baby. What is it? Oh, I don't know. I thought you were going to tell me. Oh, okay. <laughs> go, uh, go for it. Uh, we don't rehearse, guys. So we don't okay. rehearse. Nobody has time for rehearsal. All right. So it looks like uh, after a few months of uh, being, you know, going into hiding, it looks like Will Smith is coming back, uh, coming Say back what? into the spotlight. Yeah, yeah. Especially after, after uh, you know, the Oscars, uh, you know, but the Oscars incident, uh, the slap heard around the world, right? When he slapped uh, Chris Rock on stage, you know, he got a little slap on the wrist after that. And the Academy, you know, barred him from, from participating for like 10 years, right? Um, and he kind of, you know, he kind of laid low for a while, but it looks like he's coming back. Uh, Deadline's reporting that uh, he's coming back. And he's returning for a movie called Brilliance. Brilliance. Um, so here's the quote from Deadline. Charmaine Obiachinoy, uh, who worked on Miss Marvel, will make her narrative uh, feature directorial debut on Brilliance, the Paramount Pictures adaptation of Marcus Sakai novel. The film has been a passion project for Will Smith and Akiva Goldsman, who did I, Robot, I Am legend and hancock together the hopes the hope remains that the film is a star vehicle for smith all those sources said he hasn't committed to star um goldsman uh akiva goldsman wrote the script uh the premise one percent of the world's children are born with powerful gifts and are called brilliance the government keeps track of them will smith's character is a federal agent who tracks down bad brilliance with his own brilliant abilities take a shot for every time i said brilliance god or form of brilliant yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Will Smith potentially coming back. And I say potentially because it says he hasn't really committed to the star. And I wonder if that has to do with maybe he's feeling out still what's, you know, what, 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 what the temperature is of everybody after the whole incident, the whole, you know, debacle at uh, the Oscars. But Raul. But this is interesting. Yes. Raul, did he come back or was he never there to begin with? <laughs> So I've been trying to use that button for like so long now. I've had it this entire time we've had that's this show. A new, that's a new one. Today's the first day I finally get to use that. You've sound had effect. that sound effect since the first show. <laughs> yes, I've been trying to find a reason to set it up, but now now I have it. But yes, this this movie sounds uh, it's interesting. I I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm still a little bit uh, iffy about whether or not it's Will Smith's time to come back. Like, is right. it too soon? Is it not soon enough? I mean, it sounds like it's very early development right now. Um, yeah, it's. It, I'm sure by the time the movie comes out, maybe some of this will kind of blow over. I mean, it will have been a couple years by then because, you know, that's generally around the time uh, a film takes to get made and come out. Um Let's see, a couple years from now, will this, yeah, do you what, think this what, might blow over? What year is this going to come out in? Do we know? Uh, uh, we don't know, but it looks like... Uh, well, right. Yeah, I, that's right, because they, they only just announced that this was happening, so maybe they don't have a set date just so yet. But The script is already written. 
it looks like, um, says, says deadline. But yeah, it doesn't look like there's any set date uh, that they've announced uh, as, of, as of now. Um, so Raul, yeah. do you, Raul, do you want to see Will Smith in another movie right now? Like right now, this year, if it came out like next month, would you want to watch this? I mean, yeah, if it's good, I mean, I, I'm not one of the people who are like, you know, calling on Will Smith to, to end his career. You know what I mean? Mm. It's just one of those unfortunate incidents. He, I don't know, who knows what people are going through. I mean, it wasn't cool what he did. It was totally not cool. Um, you know, in my opinion, we haven't really talked about this incident at all, really. But in my opinion, Chris Rock was up there doing his job. You know, he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. And uh, Will Smith came up on stage, interrupted him while he was doing his job, and assaulted him basically, mm. in front of everybody. And it wasn't cool. You know, if he had a problem with Chris Rock, that's the kind of stuff, you know, you do in private. You t pull him off to the side. You reach out to him. Hey, say, you know, say, hey, that wasn't really cool. Um, but do we want him to, to quit acting? Are we calling on him to, to stop acting altogether? I mean, I think that's ridiculous. Well, does, uh, it, you know? does, it leave, does it leave a bad taste in your mouth when you see Will Smith right now on camera or in a film or in a TV show? Like, if he were to appear next month, would you be like, Ugh, or would you be like, nah, man, I'm into the story. Let, it'll get me out of it. You know? I'll say for me right now, yes. I, I think right now... I still can't uh, separate him from this incident right now. I mean, it was earlier this year, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard, at least for me, it would be hard to separate him from this incident because there's still, you know, it's still so fresh in our heads. Um, so I'm thinking, and I'm a big Will Smith fan. I love Will Smith. I think he's a phenomenal actor. Um, so I'm thinking, hopefully, by the time this movie does come out, um, it sounds like it could be fun. It kind of reminds me of, like, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Blade Runner. It sounds like kind of like a, a, a Blade Runner, Ray Blade Runner, but instead of, you know, uh, replicants, it's, you know, people with powers. So it sounds like it could be a cool concept. And, it's, um, uh, it's just it, X-Men. <laughs> it's X-Men. Basically, just the 1%. Look, it's the 1% of people with random mutational powers, and there's a guy going after him, and he himself has those powers too. Right. That's Professor Xavier and, uh, and Logan looking for other mutants, trying to find them to go back to their school or something. I mean, maybe... He probably kills him because he's trying to go after all the the bad ones. Yeah, quote that's what his that's what he's but, doing. Yeah, again, it's like it, Blade to me, Runner. it sounds like it's gonna be one of those like Will Smith. It's his job to go after these mutant brilliant people and then when he finds them he ends up realizing that they're good people this is my impression of will smith uh, <laughs> he <laughs> finds out that they're actually like good people they're not oh hell no anybody. yeah right like i i feel like i already see it in my head impression. That was a beautiful impression. Very, <laughs> well, you know you. what? That deserves a cheer. Good oh, job. Man. No, it good. does not. Very Please good. don't encourage that. <laughs> oh, who said that? Oh, somebody said that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds no, more like it. I, I think uh, knowing Will Smith and the way he likes to market himself usually, like I, I don't see him being the guy who just goes after these people to kill them and that's it. There's got to be a twist to it. He himself is one of those people. He's going to have to feel for them as well. Like there's going to have to be, there's probably going to be a moment where they're going to turn on him and he's going to be like, ah. But also, when all is said and done, um, it does say here that he he hasn't, like, committed to the to the role yet. Right. But he and Akiva Goldsman, had, who had been working on all those other movies together, mm -hmm. it, it was their dream project to work on that. So, like, I don't know. Like, I... It was well, a good relation. It's a, it's been a good relationship. I like iRobot. Um, and uh, what else did he? I am Legend. That was a decent movie. Hancock. Eh, it was okay. But uh, I did. I think iRobot was one of my favorites of those uh, of those three films that they listed. So you know, I'm looking forward to this. And like we said, yeah, he's he hasn't committed yet. But I'm thinking he's kind of waiting to feel things out. So yeah. Well, I mean, I I don't think it's just Will Smith though, dude. I I think it's like the movie company that's trying to get this movie up because they're like. Do we want Will Smith to be this character right yeah. now and star in this movie after all the drama that he's brought with him yeah. so far? Or are we like what you just said? They're testing the waters to see like is this really going to be right. worth doing? So it's this... not. So it's, it probably is Will Smith thinking that stuff, but also the company behind him is like. Should yeah, we? I, I wonder how much of it is that. Oh, Will Smith hasn't committed. How much of it is that, or how much of it is? It's not that. It's so much the studio has not committed to hiring Will Smith yet. Yeah. Or including him in the project, even though him and Akiba Goldsmith, these are this is their baby project. But oh yeah, 
we'll see. I think in a couple of years by the time, you know, this movie comes out, hopefully we'll we'll all have cooled on Will Smith in this whole situation. So. Do you think do you think uh one more thing before we move on to the next topic here is do you think Will Smith has to rebrand himself as a person or as a, so, how he presents himself on film from now on after everything that's happened to him or do you think he's going to try to go back to the way things were? I mean try to go back to the way things were meaning what like, exactly presenting himself as the celebrity actor that he is when he's on camera like he's always the the cool guy that, that everybody wants to hang out with kind of character he's always trying to do the create the serious serious dramas and stuff like that uh, well, I mean I think that's the intention I think he'd like to go back to that but I do think he does have a, a little work to do in his personal life um, oh, yeah. try to get some help I don't know it's you know it, it, things who knows what like again who knows what's going on in people's heads you know he may have had he may have had a bad day and have maybe he's got some stress or things going on in his personal life that he maybe needs to take care of and make sure uh, but yeah I think he's got some work to do as far as gaining our trust back and things like that but honestly i think uh once he gets back in the game and starts making good movies and really uh, cranking out killer performances you know we'll probably all forget about that yeah, you know a, a win is a win right like as soon right. as he wins then it's all we're right. all going to stop thinking about movie, what happened before movie goers we're, we're kind of fickle on that you know it's yeah. like you can see somebody you know you see somebody kind of go off the rails and then we all get mad at them for a little while but then they come back and they do they do incredible work and we just forget about all that right we just kind of move yeah. on um so, so i think i think like two years from now i'm sure we're all going to be in a better mindset to like let him come on back in so we could watch him and you know, hope he's he's recovered from everything he's been through, and hopefully we have too, you know? Yeah. But uh, you know who hasn't been recovering from things that oh. they've gone through lately is uh, Marvel Blade loses their director, Bassam Tariq. Um, God, I hope I, I pronounced that last name right. That sounds um, good to me. We got this report here from Hollywood Reporter saying uh, Blade, which has a release date of November 3rd, 2023, was mm. gearing up. That's next year. Holy crap. Yep. Was gearing up to begin shooting in November in Atlanta. This November, they were going to start shooting That's in right. Atlanta. It's unclear how Tariq's departure will impact the production start of the vampire action thriller, which has Oscar winner Mahershala Ali in the title role. Mm. Dot, dot, dot. Due to <laughs> continued shifts in our... This is something that they said, uh, the Marvel, I think, said. Due to continued shifts in our production schedule, Bassam is no longer moving forward as director of Blade, but will remain an executive producer on the film, Marvel said in a statement to THR. Ah, I was right. Marvel did say that. In additional report from Industry Insider, Jeff Snyder... Uh, sources tell him that the current Blade script is roughly 90 pages and features exactly two lackluster Ugh. action sequences. Mahershala is said to Yikes. be very frustrated with the process. Yeah. Kevin Feige said to be spread... Oh, Kevin Feige has been said to be spread too thin. Mm -hmm. There is so much about Ooh. this. Um, that last sentence especially is Kevin Feige set, being said to be spread thin. I kind of well, yeah. agree with that, dude. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, there's so many Marvel projects, and don't get me wrong, I'm wearing a Marvel shirt right now. I S love Marvel. Same. You got a Wolverine? I got I, Wolverine too. I yeah, got baby. Wolverine. Uh, but like, that's I, I love Marvel, but when yeah. there's been so much Marvel that you know the producer, the one producer technically who's trying mm. to handle all of this, is is burning out. Like, you can tell. You could see when that happens to him. Um, I'm, I don't know if you're watching She-Hulk at all, Raul, but I'm I've been I'm, I'm behind on the uh, the newest two episodes, but yeah. I feel like that show it's it's not what I expected it to be. Mm, yeah. I'm not going to say that it's I agree. a bad show, but I will say that I find it difficult to laugh at it. Like I, I mm. it's supposed to be a comedy and I don't find myself laughing that mm. often. But also the fact that the show's like so much shorter. It's like 20 minute, 30 minute episodes. Yeah, it's and crazy. It, it just ends so fast. And we only get nine episodes. We only get this much time now yeah. with this new superhero that they're trying to introduce to us. I think I get the point of who She-Hulk is as a character. But there's a part of me that's like, man, I, I think if Kevin Feige had even more of a grip on this project, I think we could have made something more out of it. But then again, my expectations, I feel like I can't let them control me because when you, you when you have too many expectations about a project, uh, it, it'll drive you crazy when you finally see the product. Mm -hmm. But Raul, what do you think about all this? Mahershala Ali, not, you know, not happy. The movie is being possibly maybe delayed, do you think? I don't know. What do you I think? I mean, okay, so here's, here's the deal. This is probably... 
I mean, in the history of Marvel Studios, with all their films, generally, with the exception of a couple bumps, um, Edward Norton's relationship with Marvel, and then Edgar Wright leaving uh, the Ant-Man project, uh, maybe like a couple other more here or there, um, for the most part, especially within the, fast, the past five years or so, uh, it's been smooth sailing, right? So, you know, there hasn't usually been a lot of drama associated with any of the behind-the-scenes stuff regarding the Marvel Studios films. This is interesting because here is something, this is like, oh, this is this, this is weird because we're starting to see some drama here now. And we're like, oh, we're not used to this. This is uh, the first kind of incident like this we've seen in a long time with Marvel. And uh, yeah, we've heard whispers uh, for a while now about Kevin Feige, you know, being spread too thin and stuff. And you can tell. I mean, you can, you can see because... I mean, God, we got so many projects coming out each year. I mean, it was easier when you had like two films a year, two, mm. maybe three films a year, as it, as it was the case, you know, leading up to Endgame. But now we've got like four movies a year, four TV shows all happening within a year. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's a lot mm. of content. So... It makes total sense that Kevin Feige, Kevin Feige is being spread so thin. I mean, he has to overwatch all of this stuff, you know? Um, and so he can't always be as involved with all the productions now. And it looks like this movie is kind of suffering from what I'm gathering. It looks like, so let's look at the facts, you know? Well, the facts, the alleged facts, because, you know, this is what Jeff Snyder, the insider, has, has heard, um, is that, you know, they've got only 90-page script, features two lackluster action sequences, right? So it sounds like the script really isn't finished. It's very, very minimal. So they're about to go into production this November with very, with seemingly an unfinished script. And uh, it, it seems like that may be the cause of a lot of the drama. We don't know for sure, but I, I from what it looks like to me, maybe the lack of uh, a finished script may have been what frustrated uh, uh, Bassam Tariq. And uh, it's possible that may have been the reason why he left. Um, and I'm sure because of all this, Mahershala Ali, you know, he's been wanting to get in into the ring with this with this Blade movie. I mean, he's been wanting to play. He's been announced to play Blade since like what 2019. We're in 2022 right now. Dude, and he's getting old. Do you he's, think, yeah, he's not getting any younger. Let me, so, can I ask you this? Yeah. Do you, do you think Mahershala Ali, if we keep waiting more and more, do you think he's still going to want to be Blade in the next two years? Like, what if the movie doesn't come out? Like, it's not going to come out next year. Like, what if they don't film next year and it doesn't come out next year? Will they delay it? Will Mahershala Ali say, nah, I'm done? Do you, well, that's you think? the thing. That's the thing now is it's looking like because I can't see any possible reason this thing is supposed to go in production again this November with a release of November 2023. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Definitely. It not. doesn't look like that's going to be the case because how are you going to find a new director to to replace this one now and get them up to speed on all the the whole process of this film and not only that not only catch the director up and have the director kind of be involved in the process but not only that. Uh, you still got this issue of the lackluster script or the, you know, the, the, the 90 page script that that needs to be figured out and all that stuff. So they've got all these problems that still need to be ironed out. And then on top of that, you gotta, you gotta find a new director and have them ready to film this November. Mm. I mean, I, I hate to say it because I really want to see this blade movie, but I don't think this film is going to start production this year at all. No, no, not at all. But, let let me just, let me say this. I, I'm going to play devil's advocate t for you here. Cause mm. I, I do agree that a 90 page thing is very surprising, um, but I don't think 90 pages means that it's going to be a bad script. You no, know? not they, necessarily. They, I think what, what is it that they say? Like for every page uh, of a screenplay, you get one minute. So this yeah. is an hour and a half. Like this movie Roughly would be an hour, an hour and, and a half. half so if far, you, yeah. If you look at something like Venom 2, Venom 2 is like an hour and a half. Sure. And they told the beginning, middle, and end. They told the story. Heck, Disney movies do hour and a half films all the time for kids. Right. You know, it's. I think it's just usually not what adults are expecting to see from a from a movie like this. Well, the thing um, that's concerning me is not just the ninety page script, because as you said, ninety page. Okay, you it's know, doable. An, an, or an yeah. hour and a half. That's doable. But, but it's, it's the lackluster. That, it's well, it's that combined with the reports of the lackluster action uh, action sequences, and then the director leaving, and then. And Mahershala being frustrated, all of that together makes me think, 
okay, maybe there's something going on with the writing process in this 90 page script. If it was just the issue with the 90 page script, I think that's fine because you can do a decent movie with, with an hour, you know, in an hour and a half, as long as the storytelling's good and everything. Mm. But all these little problems kind of adding up um, kind of cause the concern here. So, yeah, I, he, he, I don't know. A, I got a speculation. I wonder if, if Kevin Feige being called... Uh, too, you know he's spreading too thin like they're saying things like that and now he's starting to see that in the in the news articles and whatever as the headlines do you think that's like a wake up call for him to be like okay i got to focus on blade right now cuz we're clear i'm clearly not giving enough time to blade because i'm so i am spread thin i have to admit that that's the case with me right now there's a lot of projects to work on well, we that's want the them thing. to be good but we're losing quality because there's way more to work on for one guy well, that's the thing, right, is I don't think that's possible at this point because look at all the projects that are that are announced for Phase 5 and Phase 6. You know, we don't know all of the Phase 6 movies, but there's a lot of projects that are involved. At this point, you know, the, the wheels are, are, are already turning here with this. You know, the, the, the ball's already moving. Mm. But, you know, I don't think there's anything going back. So unless we start, uh, unless Marvel starts announcing cancellations of a lot of these films to clear up the, you know, the, 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 backflow um i don't see this getting any easier for kevin feige at all unless after secret wars they start bring pulling it back a little bit and maybe release a couple movies a year or a couple shows a year right yeah um so it's it's not going to get any, any easier anytime soon for kevin feige so i don't know it's it's looking like and see here's a, let me ask you this kevin yeah what's up if they push back this movie how closely do you think Blade is tied in with the rest of the Marvel films? I mean, do you think that if they push back this movie, they might have to push back other movies down the yes. line? How does this affect yes. the whole rest of the slate? The answer is 100% yes, because if you think about it, uh, there's a lot of projects coming out, like the the Witch one, Heart, Agatha Harkness, and the mm. Harkness of the Covens or whatever they called it. They got that going on. They got the, the Werewolf show coming out next month. We yeah. got, like, there's supernatural stuff Werewolf happening night, right yeah. now. Werewolf by Night, that's the one. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of supernatural stuff happening right now, and who better to introduce us to more supernatural stuff than Blade? You yeah. know, so if we don't have Blade, he's definitely in that supernatural category. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if Agatha Harkness show gets delayed or something like that. Probably. Because, you know, it's kind of like how we talk about all the comics, how, like, everything kind of intertwines with each other. But, like, well, you can tell these stories here without worrying because you still have time before you get to this big Avengers thing where everybody gets together again. I mean, they so, have done this before. They have dealt with this kind of thing before because, remember, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was supposed to come out before Spider-Man No Way Home. But, you know, with issues with the pandemic and all the delays and stuff, they had to push it back so that it came after No Way Home and kind of reworked the script. So. Yeah. They've done it before. Uh, hopefully, they can kind of get back on track with this. But yeah, I don't see this starting production anytime. It, in soon. my opinion, uh, I'll say this, and then and then we'll move on to our next topic here, guys. Uh, I think Mahershal Ali is not going to be Blade. That, I'm I'm Thanks. I'm calling a hot shot right now. Oh I think, man! I think don't he's, say that to me. In my opinion, he's he's getting too old. I think. Yeah, uh, I guess the only way I could argue with that is that look at Samuel Jackson. He looks great, though. Samuel Jackson's in his 70s, and he still looks like he's, like, 45. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. He, do he does look good. Mahershala Ali is, is, a, is an Oscar-winning actor, and this guy's sitting, waiting around to do his next movie, which yeah. is Blade. And if, if it doesn't happen, and if we keep pushing it back then he's done. He's out. And it doesn't look yeah. like they're going to start shooting anytime it soon. It all depends on him and how patient he is and how much does he really want to be in this movie. I mean, it's, where where is his breaking point, you know? so this, and, and this is the reason why I don't think they're going to find a director because just because of the fact that they said we've got a 90-page lackluster two-fight lackluster fight film or whatever, that they're complaining about the script. So is Kevin Feige going to sit there and go, I don't care, do the script. Yeah. No, they're not going to want to do the script now because now all the fans, now we're all going to sit around going, oh man, it's only one hour and 30 minutes for Blade, that's all we get. 
So Kevin Feige is going to be like, oh boy, I got to work harder and you know come up with a new script because yeah. that's it. We're done. We got to move on. You might have to step in and be a little more focused on this one now after all this stuff. So. It's almost like when you have too many kids and that one kid <laughs> starts throwing pencils at the teacher and now you got to you got to give that one kid attention because if you don't, he's going to end up throwing pencils at everybody. Like, after I can't him. leave you alone for five minutes. Jesus, man! I like, step out to the I step out to the convenience store to buy cigarettes and then I come back and everything's gone to shit. But you know deep down that there's potential in that child and you want to take care of that child to make sure that it's the best thing ever. But you know what's worse is not just the children when they're bad, when the parents betray you, Raul, which kind of <laughs> segues me into our next topic here, yeah. which is Zaslav buys WB to sell it to Universal. Mm. Raul, I'm already mad just from that title because <laughs> as all you listeners have been Listen, hopefully listening to most of our episodes, you guys know how much we've endured talking about WB and all yeah. the ups and downs these guys have gone through. We got this report here from Hollywood Reporter. It says, given the company's daunting challenges, it has become accepted wisdom at the highest level of the industry that another deal waits in the wings for Warner Bros. Discovery. For, for reasons related to the complicated structure of that merger, no negotiations can happen until April 2024. But at that point, many industry observers believe that Comcast's Brian Roberts will make a long-awaited move, looking to combine NBC Universal and Warner Bros. Discovery. That deal would face some interesting antitrust issues, but would still give this company scale and a viable streaming service. And then somebody says, obviously, Peacock sucks, says one exec from Knowledge... Uh, <laughs> With knowledge of both companies, there are some good synergies. I'm sure Roberts is licking his chops because the WB stock is so low. I think that Zaslav's endgame, I think that's Zaslav's endgame. Get the place sold. Hmm. I, mm, Interesting. I, I'm just, Interesting. It's just a big boo <laughs> for me, man, because it's just, I don't know. We, we just want, like, listen, one thing's for sure. I, I love DC and I want to see DC flourish. And I usually people would be like, what about all those? Oh, what everything else from Warner Brothers? Yeah, Warner Brothers has cool stuff. It's cool. It's fine. But like <laughs> DC is a thing that that's their king. That's their moneymaker right now. Right. They literally can make a billion dollars with Aquaman. Like how well, supposedly are you that's what David Zaslav thinks as well. He thinks that's the that should be the crown jewel of Warner Brothers. Yeah. We are they're mistreating the DC universe because they're they're just trying to get on with everything, make as much money as they can out of it and say, clearly we're not going to start over the DC universe. So we're just going to make money with all these last few minute things and then get rid of it so that the next company can start it over. So now I'm over here thinking, why the heck do I want to watch Black pa Black Adam? Not Black Panther. I want to watch that really bad. <laughs> but Black Adam, I want it. I'm really excited for it. I've seen the trailers. They look really cool. But now you're telling me that if they sell the company and then the next company is going to start it over, why do I give a crap about it, Black Adam? Why do I care about the Flash, the new Flash movie? Why do I care about Aquaman 2? Why do I care about anything mm -hmm. that DC has to offer to us right now if it's just going to be gone? Like, none of it's going to matter. It's not going to have a connected universe. Kevin, here's my argument to you. The argument would be that, uh, oh, because they, maybe they have good stories to tell. Okay, great. The Batman, great movie, awesome story, not connected to the DC universe. If that's the case, fine, but at least make that clear. You know what I mean? Like, right. make it clear that we're no longer connecting universes anymore. These are interconnected right now, but this is the end of these stories and that's it. We're moving on. Okay. Make it obvious. Communicate that with us as fans because we're expecting you to bring Henry Cavill back. And clearly, that's probably not going to happen. Maybe. I Rumors. don't know. Rumors? Who knows? Raul, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy my voice yelling about this. What, what do you think about you this? You don't seem to care about this issue at all. Not uh, at all. No, nothing. Nothing at all. It's funny. I feel like the girlfriend in a romantic comedy was like, I thought you cared about me, but now it turns out you're just <laughs> using me. Um, okay, so is this, is this, how is this confirmed? Is this confirmed that this is indeed, indeed what Zaslav is trying to do? Or is this just like hearsay? Because I, I, I can't, it's a long quote, so I can't really find it in the quote. Where, what is, what's this the is, confirmation here on this? The, the This is confirmed that we we got a source, uh, the one of the execs who is talking about all the companies uh, who's discussing the, the, the 
most the probability that this is going to happen mm. like this is just the next step for Zaslav and the more you see rumors like oh maybe Zaslav might bring Henry Cavill back for this one movie for this one movie mm -hmm. it's because Zaslav is slowly just taking all the last minute pieces saying how, how can I make as much money as possible mm -hmm. to make this brand strong enough that I can sell it and but make we don't, as much money from it but am I correct in saying we don't know this a hundred percent for sure that that's what Zaslav's intention has been the whole time? Uh, what? What? <laughs> well, I, all I got is okay. this article. Hollywood okay. Reporter okay. did that's, report Okay, this. so this is an insider from an exec, an exec from Warner Brothers telling this to, to, the, uh, to Hollywood Reporter, right? Yes. Is that this is what the whispers are. Okay. Oh, this is this is kind of disheartening, right? Because uh, this whole time, this we thought that again the girlfriend analogy. I thought Zaslav cared about wanting to, you know, set the set a new direction for Warner Brothers and be involved with this. But now I'm hearing this. If this ends up being true, that Zaslav essentially has that that basically Discovery has merged with Warner Brothers to kind of flip it. So to speak, you know, do like a you know, uh, 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 you know, the one, a Discovery Channel TV show analogy, flip it and then resell it to another company. If that's the case, sure, uh, you know, if that was the case, maybe that's 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 fine. All right, that's fair. Sell it to another company. But the thing is, that now totally undercuts everything we heard on the you know the 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 investor call and all that stuff the 10 year plan i mean maybe that's that maybe universal might pick that up and continue with it but the fact that they went on this investor call and said here are our plans for dc you know we want to build up warner brothers we want to build up dc we've got a 10 year plan you know we're going to kind of do what what marvel has done at disney here's the th you know here's what we're doing but now hearing this, if this ends up happening, that kind of undercuts all that all that stuff that they told us in the investor call. Because how do you know that Universal isn't going to continue that on, you know, or if they're going to just scrap their whole plan and do whatever the hell they want, whatever that ends up being? Mm. So it's just weird. It's disheartening. And now I'm just like, all right, well, what's going to? Well, the only thing I can say, hold on real quick, Kevin, yeah, yeah, and then I'll pass it back yeah. to you. The only thing I can say that could be exciting about Universal taking on Warner Brothers is maybe they'll start putting DC stuff in the parks. And getting so the Florida park can get rid of all their Marvel stuff and then replace it with uh, DC stuff over at Islands of Adventure. That's a great idea. Anyway, go ahead, Kevin. I will say that you know I would say this article is eighty percent like confirmed is what I would say because the th this businessman is putting all the pieces together for us, but also we can put our own pieces together if we refer back to Zaslav's uh, you know big meeting online where he's reporting everything for his company. He never really straight out said. I want to start the universe over and start here and let's go. He's been saying, we want to figure out how to do it. We'd love to figure out. But most importantly, but they said we've got a 10 year plan. I'm sorry. We've got a no, he said he says we we're planning a 10 year plan. So we're he never planning said, a plan. He never said we have a 10 year plan. We're planning he said, on making we, a plan. We want to have a 10 year plan. And also, if you look at the pieces, he he is trying to get someone to be the next Kevin Feige, and we reported mm. the guy that was going to be the next ten-year plan guy, and then it was taken back, and now he's not doing it anymore. Now the yeah. guy's not. So now we still don't have a Kevin Feige for the W or for the DC universe. Then there's the fact that in that uh, you know that meeting, that big online meeting he had, he also just says, "I want to strengthen the DC universe brand, and I want to protect it." from things that could damage it. Mm. You know why he wants to do that? So he can sell it. That's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, again, it's not a hundred percent this like confirmed, this is what Zaslav's gonna do, but he's never said that he's not gonna do that. I mean, and also one last thing is the fact that if this article came out, this actually came out like about a week and a half, two weeks ago already. Yeah. Zaslav still has not made a public response to this article or anybody talking about this because maybe they caught him red-handed and he feels like if he just said yeah we're planning on selling it then nobody would care period that would just right. be it 
I think he's trying to stay. He would quiet. put out some sort of statement to kind of ease everybody's yeah, like or we here at WB or Warner Brothers Discovery, yeah. like we hear your what you're all concerned about, and we want to let you know that we're doing everything we can to continue our 10 year plan. Because there are like, big things happening. I mean, uh, Matt Reeves just signed that whole first look deal with Warner Brothers. You know, they're hoping to have Matt Reeves come on in the long term and and do projects for them. Like, so what is that? Ha- what happens to that if they sell to Universal? Is that yeah. Are, are they going to, you know, change all that stuff? I don't know. It, it's just weird. And... If anything, I it, if I was NBC Universal and somebody said, hey, do you want Warner Brothers? Like, do you want all of it? And here's all the DC stuff. If I was the guy in charge of NBC Universal, I'd be like, yes. And also, <laughs> yeah. scrap everything. We're starting over. I don't care anymore. I'm tired of making people feel like there's hope that this Zack Snyder universe is going to continue. Get rid of it. Get rid of Robert Pattinson. Get rid of everything, Raul. Everything, Raul. I'm done. Like Joaquin Phoenix? Joaquin Phoenix. Lady Gaga can go adieu somewhere else. Okay? (laughs) I'm I'm over it. I'm just so over this. Like, clearly, as you can tell, I'm very excited about this happening for some reason. Gosh darn it, man. Like I just I just I just feel like it's easier to rip the band-aid and move on rather than sit tight hoping that the the wound heals a little bit. Like yeah. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of doing that. I just want good content. I want good quality stuff. If you're going to con- con- you know connect a universe, just do it already. Like stop thinking about it. Yeah. You know, it's it's a difficult thing being the king in charge of all this stuff, but you want to know something? We got some other kings in mind right now Ooh. who are taking care of some kingdoms, I hear. And I'm not talking about Game of Thrones, Raul. I'm talking oh. about the kingdom of the planet of the apes. Kingdom of the Crystal been Skull? Announced. No. The... <laughs> we don't talk about that one. Oh, yeah, that's right. So for exist. those of you who couldn't tell, we are segueing into our next topic here. <laughs> we got uh, kingdom of the planet of the apes has been announced. Raul. Read to us our, our Hollywood Reporter uh, yeah. quote here of the day. So this just came out, what, a couple years ago? I mean, a couple years ago, a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, Hollywood Reporter saying that the next Planet of the Apes movie is coming into focus with 20th Century Studios confirming the cast of the newly titled Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. The film from director Wes Ball uh, will star... Owen Teague alongside newly announced cast members Freya Allen and Peter Macon. Um, it is slated for a 2024 release. Yeah, so we got our fourth film in the Apes universe. Um, so, so are we not getting, uh, what's his face, Andy Serkis back? Andy Sir, have you not seen War for the Planet oh, of the Apes? Oh, crap, he dies, right? Does he die? Spoilers, guys, spoilers. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, you haven't confirmed it. <laughs> um, what are you, Zazlav? <laughs> Come on. Well, yeah. Uh, spoilers for war. Okay, spoilers for war for the Planet of the Apes, guys. Uh, <laughs> Caesar does in fact die um, at the end of the film. At he the had end way of too film. much Caesar salad. Uh, <laughs> choked just, on his Caesar salad. He ate himself to death like uh, like the guy in in Seven. Um, oh. So so anyway, so yes, he's not coming back. Box. But there is uh, the, uh, who is it? I think Owen T. Who's the I'll be honest, I don't know who Owen Teague is, but... I don't know I don't know who they are either, but I think Owen Teague might be the one who is said to play the lead ape in this movie, the lead the lead star. Oh, uh, I believe okay. that's which one of these guys. And maybe... But anyway, it's an, it's going to focus on a new uh, ape leader. <laughs> uh, not He might be playing uh, Caesar's son, who we saw at the, uh, uh, at the end of uh, the last movie. So it looks like this is going to be kind of a new era, a new quite literally in the in the universe it says it takes place a few years later right um yeah also let me just say i yeah. i have seen the the trilogy that matt reeves was working on except for that first one because that's not what he worked on but i have seen all three movies but i i, I just don't remember them i got to rewatch them before they're this great comes out. i love the apes films i think mm-hmm. um all i love the the especially these this new trilogy this new uh, wave of films that that uh, have has come out starting with rise of the planet uh, planet of the apes my favorite of all three is still dawn of the planet of the apes that's uh, matt reeves is uh Matt Reeves' debut in that in that series, and good lord, that's a great one. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this seems to be kind of like a new a new stage in the in the series, uh, new era, focusing on new characters. Uh, I'm just assuming for now, until they say otherwise, that this new lead ape character is probably Caesar's son, all grown up, and we're gonna see 
we're getting close to because this doesn't necessarily contradict everything anything that happens in the very first 1960s planet of the apes mm. um so we might be getting closer and closer to the situation that ends up being uh in that very first one in the 60s would you so, want to see that raul like if that if that movie were to come out like would you be excited for it would you be like ah like we've already seen this already Maybe I mean they, they might. It, who knows? It depends on where they want to go with this. Will they will they end right before the the nineteen sixties one, or will oh. they actually continue and remake the nineteen sixties one? You know, they're yeah. essentially essentially saying that the very original nineteen sixties Planet of the Apes is uh, is not part of this universe. Yeah. Well, also, um, technically, there is already a remake of that movie. Right? I mean, wasn't there one in the 2000s yes, with the Matt Tim Damon? Tim Burton. It was the Tim Burton 2000, yeah. 2001 remake, which is not... <laughs> yeah, I, I heard it wasn't good either. I, yeah, Mocky Mock, yeah. Oh, so we got a planet full of apes here? What are <laughs> we doing? Oh, I what thought are, it was Matt Damon. What's going on? That's how long it's been since I've seen that movie. No, it was Mark oh Wahlberg. Yeah. What are you doing? So you like a walking, talking ape, huh? What are we doing get, there? Get your hand, damn, what's, dirty what's hands going on? on me. I don't understand what you're doing. Uh, anyway. Also, I, no. I just saw Father Stu with Mark Wahlberg in it, and that man is phenomenal in that movie. Um, oh, is but it? no, it, it's very good. We'll talk about it afterwards. But uh, I, I think I, I do see myself seeing them making a new version of the movie because I think based on everything they've learned with all the you know CGI work and technology that they've got now, um, I'm pretty sure if that they if they made a remake of Planet of the Apes, it'd be like the Avengers type of level of excitement for everybody if we mm. finally got to that point yeah. um because now you've seen all these extra movies before the actual event happened so you're building up to it so mm. it it's almost a no-brainer like they got they're gonna make so much money off of that if they can make that work yeah but uh yeah i'm excited for it i can't wait to see what it's gonna be we'll, like um, we'll see i'm not again I've, I've heard people say like oh no we don't need any more of these apes films i'm like yeah hey bring it on i don't know but i'm i'm not so precious about it that i'm like oh no why are they gonna keep going you're gonna ruin it if it's good if the script's good if the directors and the actors are all good i'm all for it even if it's an hour and a half we'll still enjoy it if it's a good <laughs> story right. you know <laughs> yeah absolutely but three lackluster fight scenes not two all right <laughs> Jesus, but I think 2024. I, I think that'll be pretty good. Um, if it if I had to choose between watching Brilliant and then this one, I'd probably go watch Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. So, yeah. ugh, you guys doing this Will Smith movie? You better time it right if you want me to go watch it right now. <laughs> but uh, anyways, any any last thoughts on this one before we go to our next topic? No, we'll just uh, I'll wait to see what you know. We'll pay attention to more developments on this movie as it goes on. But so far, I'm like, yeah, sure, another Planet of the Apes movie, great. I like all the other ones. Well then, shall we move to this next one? Let's do it. We've got Karate Kid movie announced for 2024. Everything's coming out in 2024, dude. Right? Yeah. What's up? What with is that? the deal? What's up with that? Uh, this comes to us from Variety. Sony Pictures has announced the return of the original Karate Kid franchise to the... Also, that's, on, that's like quote-unquote. Quote-unquote Karate Kid franchise to the big screen by dating a new Karate Kid movie for June 7th, 2024. That's a day after my birthday. Mm. While the franchise has lived on thanks to Netflix's Cobra Kai series, which just debuted its fifth season on the streaming platform, this new Karate Kid project will be the franchise's first film offering since a 2010 reboot starring Jaden Smith. The 2024 Karate Kid movie does not yet have a synopsis for the studio or a cast and crew attached. I, so okay, so basically they're gonna do like a multiversal thing where Jaden Smith fights uh, the original Karate Kid, and then the uh, oh crap, who was the girl who was in Karate Kid Four? Oh, was, um, uh, uh, God, Hillary oh, Swank. Hillary, Hillary Swank. Swank. So we get Hillary Swank, we get Jaden Smith, As and then we get Julie San, and then we get our our, our Daniel San also in there. And then Jackie Chan comes in and he, he you know, uh, sadly we don't have Miyagi, but Jackie Chan comes in and he trains all three of them in a multiversal karate war. And then, uh, and then, yeah, and then that's it. That's, that's the movie. Thoughts, Raul? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm a little... I'm a little confused about this announcement because I think, honest, right now, Netflix is having great success with Cobra Kai. I love Cobra Kai. I haven't seen the new season yet, but I love the first four seasons. I think it's great. I think it's fun. Um, and it's really kind of brought new life to the Karate Kid franchise and kind of taken it in a different direction, but in a super fun way. Hmm. 
there's not enough information about this new movie to have me think one way or another on it because it's like, okay, what is this going to be? Is this going to be, you know, by 2024, uh, does that mean, I think, I think, is it season six of Cobra Kai will be the last season? I think so. Yeah, so, so what are we doing? Are we doing, it? yeah, are we doing Cobra Kai and then ending that season and then taking those characters and, and they'll, they'll it, will it be a continuation of the Cobra Kai franchise or will it be its own thing? Will it be separate? Will it be other characters? If that's the case, I'm like, well, what's going on here? You're going to have two different Karate Kid, you know, uh, things going on that, that have nothing to do with each other so close together. I think that's a little strange because I feel like if this was an all new, if this Karate Kid movie was like all new characters, all new everything, basically have nothing to do with Cobra Kai, I would be a little confused by that, especially because this seems to come out so close to the end of Cobra Kai. Mm. You know, I feel like something like this you would do after maybe five, ten years, be like, hey, we're rebooting Karate Kid, uh, you know, we're doing an, a, another Karate Kid movie in 20, you know, 2034, whatever. That makes more sense, but the fact that they're putting this movie out, like, right after Cobra Kai ends, it, you know, it, it all depends. Like, if it is continuation of the Cobra Kai series, then I'm I'm all for it, but if not, I'm very confused. So, yep, it's I agree. weird. I agree. I think, I think there's a uh... If I want them to set it up so that season six ends, and then at the end of that season, it's like, "Whoa, oh, what's gonna happen next? Find out in the Cobra Kai movie!" And then that's the actual title of this Karate Kid film. Because you're right, they they haven't announced really anything about this. So all we no. know is that there's a Karate Kid movie. That that again, that doesn't even mean it's gonna be called Karate Kid. Maybe it will be. Maybe it'll be Karate Kid, and then Donnie Yen's the new Miyagi, and then you got like Ooh. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to spit out names here. We got a uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds as the Karate Kid, <laughs> and it's a comedy where Donnie Yen teaches Ryan Reynolds how to fight, and he has to fight little five year olds, and he's like, I'm too good at this, guys. Come on, I can beat them up, and then all the kids beat him up instead. Uh, so you're telling me, wax on, wax off. Okay. <laughs> I waxed off last night, if you know what I mean, Donnie. Oh, and then it's like, oh, you're- I waxed you're... off watching Betty White. Uh, he's always Betty, got some Betty, Betty White. White joke. <laughs> uh, I will always love the, the Deadpool reference when he's like, uh, dressed up as Jeff Ross, or Jeff, Jeff Ross, right? Am I, am I getting his name right? Something Ross? Bob Ross, Bob Ross. That's what oh, I'm Bob Ross. Yeah. His Deadpool commercial dressed up as Bob Ross going, and now we're going to use our favorite color, Betty White. And then we'll <laughs> colors in white. But uh, yes, no, anyways, I, I don't know. They could be doing anything for this. And so... Once we get more information, because this is very, I honestly, why would they announce this? This seems like you have so little information. All it is, mm -hmm. new Karate Kid movie coming in 2024, and all it is is just confusing. So why are you, I would, if if I were uh, Sony, I would have sat on this a little longer until you had a little more to announce, you know, what's the, you know, is there, what's the, who's the cast, all the, you know, a little bit about mm -hmm. the, about the story, whatever. I mean... I don't know. I think if I was Sony Pictures, I would have sat on this news just a little bit longer because right now it's very little information and it's just confusing. Yeah, if any, like, okay, if it was connected to the Cobra Kai series, I think it would have been smarter for them to time it alongside season six. Yeah. So as season six, six is about to be released, they should have been like, ba boom, a movie. So that's right. the one thing that at the moment makes me think this might be a separate thing from the series itself. Right. Especially because so. in this announcement, You'd think if it was related to Cobra Kai, they would just come out and say it in this announcement. Hey, we're doing another Karate Kid movie, continuing the story of Cobra Kai. But mm. the fact that they haven't said that makes me wonder, like, you know, so it's not connected? I don't know. We'll see. I, we'll have to wait to see what else they say. But I really think they should have held on to this announcement. It'll be called Cobra Die. <laughs> yeah. That's actually not bad. You like that? Cobra die. Yeah, Cobra we, die. Yeah. What's that thing? Oh, Goonies never say die. I was thinking Goonies. I was going to say Cobras never say die. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> what's? You know what? I got to bring out the big guns with these jokes, and they're just not coming out. But you know what does have big guns? Uh, 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 you like what? the segue? We got Armor Wars being reworked into a movie, baby. Yeah. So, again, for all those of you, all, all those of you, that's a sentence. For those of you who don't know what this means, Armor Wars is the TV series that was going to be on Disney Plus for uh, Don Cheadle's character. Oh, I'm trying to remember his name. Hold on. Rhodey. 
Uh, who is the second Iron Man character with the guns and the whatever. Um, they're, they War originally... Machine. <laughs> That's a... Come on, yeah. War oh Machine. Oh, my God. I was literally trying to think of the name so hard. <laughs> or, or Iron Patriot. Take your Oh, call. my God. Uh, what a relief to hear somebody say it out loud so I can know it. <laughs> uh, it's been a long time since I've seen his Get character it, on, on screen. Oh, my God. I already forgot his name again. War Machine. Yes. Good. <laughs> All right. Let me. right. I'm going to read this report real quick. Okay. Do it. Get through. So... The Hollywood Reporter says, Marvel Studios has shaken up its War Armor Wars project. My words are so fun today. And now, what, 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 what was to have been a series for Disney Plus will be redeveloped as a feature film. Mm -hmm. The move essentially pushes back the title further down the development slate. Uh, sources say the studio was committed in getting the story told the right way and in that process realized that a feature was better suited for the project. Mm -hmm. Like all Marvel movies, it is uh, intended for a theatrical release. Don Cheadle, who is reprising his longtime Marvel Cinematic Universe role as Colonel James Rhodey Rhodes, aka War Machine. Literally, all the information about these characters was written right it here. It was already I there. I could have just read it all. <laughs> Remains on board to star. Uh, Yasser Lester, who is acting as head writer on the series, will remain as its feature scribe. Raul, what are the odds that we're going to see a Tony Stark AI in this movie? Possible. It's possible. Possible. Like, didn't how possible? Hear, didn't we hear something about maybe uh, Robert Downey Jr. coming back to voice Tony Stark in something? Oh, and later? suddenly, suddenly all the pieces we've been connecting in our past episodes are yeah. coming together here. Maybe, you know? I can't remember, but yeah, this is interesting, right? Mm-hmm. What, uh, yeah. So, okay, so here's the deal. So this was supposed to be a TV show, and I thought it was really interesting when uh, at Comic-Con they didn't really talk about armor wars right they announced their whole new phase five and phase five slate and some of say phase six but armor wars was uh, curiously omitted from from any of those projects being on there and i remember us talking on our comic con episode and i was like what's going on with armor wars why not it's possible that maybe at that time they weren't ready to announce anything yet because this was still on the table of possibly maybe reworking it into a movie. Question. S yes. Did I can't remember if this was announced. This was announced recently, right? Like this was like just yesterday or today or something like that, right? Yes, yesterday. This is, uh, yeah, this was on uh, the 29th, I believe. Well, how, con 29th? how convenient that two days ago, they announced hmm. that Blade was not going to be, you know, they fired the director. Hmm? I wonder. They're like, okay, good news. Here's some good news to Don't make pay this attention. Disconnect. Don't yeah. pay attention to this Blade stuff. Here, look, look shiny. Here's yeah, a shiny look. little Here's thing. Here's a Rudy. Look, he got a movie. What are the odds, do you think, Raul, that I think Armor Wars was supposed to come out this at the end of, no, beginning of next year, right? Uh, I can't. I don't have the, I don't have the slate. Uh, what if, Raul? What if now that Mahershal Ali's movie isn't going to happen in November of 2023, this is the movie that's coming out in 2023? Maybe. Maybe. But it seems like they still have some reworking. So we'll see that's how true. long it'll take um, for them to get into production. Because now that they've committed to, okay, we're going to take this TV show and we're actually going to rework it into a movie... How much longer is it going to take them to hammer out that script? What's great that I like uh, is that Yasir Lester, I think I believe I'm saying that, I'm not sure, um, who was yes, the right, who's supposed to be the writer for the show, is staying on as the writer for the movie. I think that's great. That way we have some um, consistency there, right? So it doesn't look like we're going to have another writer come in and, and completely rework the story. We're having the same writer come in and kind of uh, condense it into one movie. And I will say this, Kevin, what I'm, what I really like about this news is the fact that, I mean, how many of these shows th that we've seen come out on Disney plus where we go, you know what? That was good. I, I really liked it. I think it would have been better as a movie though. Right. I think, uh, Obi -Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think that would yeah. have been better. For me, I'm thinking of Hawkeye. I think, I, you know, as much as I enjoyed Hawkeye, I know a lot of people didn't really like Hawkeye, but as much as I, I enjoyed it pretty, pretty good, um, I think that could have been told in a feature film. You know what I mean? I, I think you could have condensed that a little bit more. And, Let me, I'll say this, just, okay. to play, just to play the devil's advocate to you here. I've noticed that at almost every single uh, series on Disney Plus for Marvel, the ending is always very anticlimactic to mm. me 
And, and yeah. it feels like it's because they're planning on doing another season of the show or something, and they right. want to just Continuing keep us it hanging. On somehow. Yeah. And so, like, the, I, I feel like there isn't a button. That's why I think WandaVision was amazing, because by the end, she's finally the Scarlet Witch, and now she's got her powers, and then she defeated the, the foe that was trying to steal her powers. Mm. Like, it had a beginning, middle, and end, and a mystery to it. Whereas then you see something like, you know, Hawkeye, and I like Hawkeye. I, I really like the show. But Hawkeye kind of ended in a note where it was like, okay, well, we didn't really right. have a definitive bad guy. And, like, yeah, this right. big guy was here, but, like, he didn't really play a huge role officially throughout the whole thing. Like, it was just – he was in the corner of our eye all the time. Sure. Um, so, like, I, I wonder if, you know, whenever they do this for Disney+, Plus, they're like, ah, it's fine that we did that. But then somebody wrote the script for Armor Wars, and they were like, oh, shit, like, this is – this is, like, really good. Like, this is, like, Toy Story 2 level good. We should yeah. put this in theaters because people are going to want to see this one. Like, if people don't want to sign up for Disney Plus to pay for this show, they'll at least want to go watch it in theaters because right. this is going to be an important one for movie general audiences to go watch. That's going to be important yeah. to the entire series or the entire franchise. Um, which also kind of dampers my mood about this, Raul, because really? that makes me think that, like, hmm. A lot of the Disney Plus series, they don't get that respect of, like, having a good, strong ending that right. will make you go, like, that will make you sit there after the credits going, oh, my God, that was awesome. You know what I mean? Well, maybe this is a sign that they're starting to think about these shows a little harder now. You know, there have been certain criticisms that have come out about these shows about, you know, them, them being too long or this and that, you know. Maybe they've taken some of that feedback because they say the the sources say that they're it says they're they're the they're committing to getting the story told the right way and in that process realize that the feature that a feature was better suited for the project. They're thinking about this stuff. They're actually putting some thought into this now and they're, maybe they're starting to go back and look at these shows and be like, you know what? Let's actually take a deeper dive into these shows and see if we can tell it in a better way. There, it, uh, to me, it signals that they're being a little more thoughtful about the projects that they're working on. And, you know, I, I take that as a good thing because they're actually looking at it and they're going, you know what, we can do this better. And this will be better as a, as a film rather than TV than a TV show. So I don't mm. know. It's encouraging for me to hear that. Yeah. That's just yeah. me. I, but it kind of uh, bums me out even more, man, just because – if it if that is their thought process, then I'm then I'm a little bummed out because like I want them to be thinking that throughout the be from the beginning of the Disney Plus stuff. You know, I want them to be thinking of how do how do we make the strongest stories from the beginning. Mm. And I know I know that they're always like, oh, we want to save the big villains for the movies, so we're not going to really worry about the so the shows too much with that stuff. Like right. we're not going to introduce the Red Skull in a TV show. We're going to do that in a movie, like in Captain America. We're mm. not going to introduce you to the Red Hulk in She Hulk, probably. So we're going to put him in Captain America. Uh, New World Order. We're not gonna, you know what I mean? Like, there's all these bigger than life characters, and yeah. we don't get to really, like, we don't, we're not allowed to experience them in the TV shows. Um, now, also, the other one last thing I'll, I'll bring up is Armor Wars. I, we've talked about Armor Wars for like two to three episodes now, dude. Like, I still don't know what the hell this show's gonna be about, other than like, it goes right out of a uh, secret uh, secret invasion. Like, that's it. Like, it comes well, out they, of that. Well, they did say in uh, at D23, they did give a little bit of the synopsis or the idea of what the what it's going to be about is that basically the, 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 the nucleus of what the story is is that what if Tony Stark's tech got into the wrong hands? Mm. And it's going to be about that. So. Okay. I All think that's right. interesting. I do think that's interesting. So maybe multi oh, and that's why it's called Armor Wars because there's yeah, multiple yeah, Iron yeah. Men having fights with each other. Kevin, hopefully, dum -dum. you know what I would love? I would love to see Sam Rockwell make a return as Justin Hammer because <laughs> I feel like this is a perfect opportunity to get him back involved in this because this was kind of they kind of touched on this a little bit in Iron Man Two. Now wait, say wait, what you wait. will about Iron Man Two, but that has that that has that story of like Tony and Justin kind of you know uh, fighting for this tech and try who's going to be the first First one to get this tech uh, out there. Yeah. If if I'm correct, Sam Rockwell, that's the guy from Iron Man Two, who's like showing off all the guns and he's trying to sell and he works with the main yeah, bad yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, Sam Rockwell, phenomenal he's actor. He's dead. What do you mean he's dead? He dies in no. the he dies in the in the in the Mandarin short film for Marvel in the shorts. No, he doesn't die. He's still in he, prison. No, he gets shot in the head. No, he's not. They, they, 
What are you talking about? No, he's still he, in prison. Go watch that thing Wait, hold again. on a second. Am I actually imagining this? I swear to God, he got shot in the head in the short. No, he's still alive. He's in prison. He can come back. All right, for all you listeners out there, if <laughs> if Raul's right, then in the of next episode... Of course I'm right. <laughs> in the next episode, uh, I will tell you all that I wore a tutu to bed last night. Th- there you go. That's my... You'll tell everybody, but will you have actually done it? I will tell everyone that I wore a tutu <laughs> last night. <laughs> all right. Hello, everybody. This is Kevin from the future here to tell you I'm going to have to wear a tutu later. Okay, enjoy the rest of your show. Go rewatch <laughs> that. Yeah, he's still alive, man. He's still alive. He can come back. Who dies in that one then? Some other guy. Somebody Some other... gets shot in the head. I don't know who All right, we'll, sh- yeah, we'll worry about it. Somebody does we'll get shot in the t- head, but it's, uh, <laughs> uh, the, you know. Trevor Slattery's still alive, and 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 uh, uh, Justin Hammer's still alive. Yeah. Also, I I'd like to see Riri Williams show up in Armor Wars and be like a like learning they, from yeah. the best of the best kind of thing, like going alongside Rhodey and working with them. Um, I think it's safe to say she she'll probably in, be involved in this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, Raul, what's our next topic here? All right, our next topic. This is a really interesting one. So it looks like, uh, I got no fancy say. (laughs) We're just going right in it. Disney pulls Rogue Squadron off release calendar. So this is an article coming from Variety. Disney has removed Rogue Squadron, the Star Wars film from director Patty Jenkins from its release calendar. The move comes as little surprise since the tentpole, which was scheduled for December 2022, 2023, was taken off the studio's production schedule in 2021. The announcement is more or less pro forma, as the window for Rogue Squadron uh, to start filming uh, to start filming in time is to, to complete the movie by next December has very nearly closed. Man, that was a wordy sentence. The next big screen story in the space opera saga had already been delayed in twenty in November 2021, reportedly due to the scheduling conflicts with Jenkins. Reported. Reported. I don't buy that at all. Very, but very yes, good word. So it looks like, I don't know, the, with all this stuff with Rogue Squadron being uh, less and less kind of talked about, it seems like Disney is quietly kind of uh, putting this on the shelf. And then sure enough, they've taken it, they've taken it off the, the, the schedule, the release calendar completely. I think this is an interesting move. I'm not really sure. I was pretty excited to hear about this project uh, when it first uh, was Dude, announced. Same. Patty Jenkins, I think, is you know she did great. She did the movie Monster with um, Christina Ricci and uh, and uh, Charlize Theron, I thought it was phenomenal. First Wonder Woman was great. Second Wonder Woman, yeah, but you know. But I like Je- I like Patty. Yeah, it was it was, <laughs> it was bad. Let's just yeah, be let's, honest let's about it. it. <laughs> but I like Patty Jenkins as a director. She's had ho- more hits than misses for me, in my opinion. But I was really excited about this one. You know, to see a different, uh, yet a different, you know, a different type of world uh, in the Star Wars universe that doesn't involve Jedi or anything like that. Um, so I thought this was cool, and I think it's. Uh, I wonder what is going on here with the whole with the whole issue. Um, I know originally they delayed it. It's a delayed reportedly due to scheduling conflicts, conflicts with Jenkins. I'm not uh, sure what that's about. I wondered, was it really scheduling conflicts or what? I don't know. know. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if the failure of Wonder Woman 1984 had something to do with Disney getting cold feet about it. I don't know. I think this is all very interesting. I don't know how to feel about it, honestly, because I, I don't know. I I didn't quite. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. It's it's yeah, it's really I, let, interesting. Let I, wonder, I, I just wonder what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know enough information to kind of understand if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. What do you think, Kevin? If you say I don't know one more time, <laughs> I could. Get... I don't know. You know. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Ah, you got it. What is? What do you think, Kevin? I think you actually made a very good valid point just now, which was the point that based on her previous work, Disney is like more hesitant to make decisions about her. So Mm. you look at look at 1984. You look at Wonder Woman one. For me, that's the two movies that I know her from. Mm. When I saw Wonder Woman, the first one, I was like, oh, my God, this movie's awesome. Yes, the CGI at the end was kind of bad with the boss battle and whatever, but it's cool. It had a good button at the end and 
taught me a lesson, whatever. Cool. Second movie shows up, and there's no bad guy at the end, blah, blah, blah. Turns out, you know, as I'm reading articles about all these movies that Patty Jenkins is working on, uh, in Wonder, Ma Wonder Woman 1, the producers behind the scenes were the ones that told her to do a boss battle at the end. She mm. had completely different intentions, and there were a lot of ideas that Warner Brothers gave her and said, you have to add this and you have to do that in this first Wonder Woman movie. Mm. And she was like, oh, all right, you're cramping my style, but all right. And then it succeeded. The movie made $800 million or something like that. And then they were like, okay, now that we're doing our sequel, go do the next one however you want we're not going to give you any notes you know what to do now and she's mm. like okay sayonara you know and she went and did her own thing didn't add a boss battle missed on a lot of points throughout this movie and suddenly all the fans were like what is this why are mm. we watching a movie like this so now disney's looking at them looking at patty jenkins going uh, so that's what patty jenkins comes up with and she's just like trying to be creative on her own like I don't know if she knows how to make a blockbuster movie per se. So maybe offering her this huge IP like Star Wars Squadrons, like that maybe it's a bad idea. Like I get that her dad is an Air Forceman or was an airman. Air Force pilot, yeah. Her dad was an Air Force pilot. Not her. You know, I, I get it that she lived with that. My dad was an airman as well. I don't know anything about the Air Force. You know what I mean? Like, where, where does that apply that I mean, she's I don't think, justified? I don't think that was something. I don't think she was saying that uh, to say, like, uh, yeah, my dad my dad, my dad was an airman. <laughs> my dirt, my <laughs> so dirt, I'm going to direct dirt, this movie. My dad was an airman, so that means I know everything there is about <laughs> being an airman. I think she was simply just saying that. Uh, to convey the fact that she's this is a very personal project for her and she really cares about it a lot. I don't think she was trying to say that, uh, you know, to mean anything else other than that. I, and I respect that. And, and also, I, I also think that, uh, you know, when it comes to this type of thing, like, I, I'm excited that she's also a female director. You know, mm. like, she's a female director and we want more of those. It was awesome that Disney made that move strategically that we want more female directors. Let's bring mm. them into Star Wars to give them an even bigger name. That's really cool. And she's supposedly really good. At the time that they saw that first Wonder Woman, they were starting to get her these offers saying, hey, do you want to be a part of Star Wars now? Because we want you. We want to make you look cooler. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's like, you know, it, it's not usually about whether or not there's a female director or this type of director or that type of director it's about who can do the best story who can tell the best story and if yeah. you find out that her creative point of view isn't really what everybody's asking for then maybe get away from that and try somebody else you know Try something different because well, it sounds like that's probably what, what they're going to end up doing. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It doesn't sound like it at all because now it seems like they've just shelved the movie entirely. So oh, I'm doubtful man. that this movie is even going to happen. Yeah. And that's that's kind of a bummer because like I think that's that's one of the things that I was really looking forward to. Like I would I would have loved to see like a Top Gun Maverick of Star Wars, you know. And I've been hearing people online saying things like, hey, why don't you get the guy from uh, Top Gun Maverick and get him to direct this? Yeah. I think I think it'd be a different thing for him to do some CGI flying stuff, but like, you know, if the story is there, then get it together and make the guy come in. It'll be really impressive marketing wise, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just now I'm saying I don't know. You see that? Look at that. Now I'm all now I'm all <laughs> bummed out, man. What a disappointment, man. Yeah, it's uh. It's kind of a shame. I don't know. It's, <laughs> now you got me so self-aware. Uh, it is it is kind of a shame. <laughs> it's kind of a shame because this could have been a, a really cool movie. And, you know, I don't know enough about what the situation is. It seems like, it, I don't know. <laughs> Damn it, Kevin. Yeah, this but yeah, is, that's, that's all. This the rest of the, the show today. <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. I think if they're going to shelve it, I would hope at least that they're shelving it because they don't want to mess it up and they're eventually going to bring it back and do something good with it. So, listen, we waited, what, what 35 years for Top Gun 2? Uh, yeah. If we have to wait another 10 years uh, to see a squadron story, then all right, well, you can't miss what you never had, right? So give us something good, at least, Star Wars. Give us something real good. But, hey... You know, getting out of the live action stuff, we also got some animation stuff to talk about here. We got Arcane wins Best Animated Program Emmy. 
This comes to us from Collider. Netflix's Arcane has become the first streaming show to win an outstanding animation Emmy. The win is uh, the win is notable for Netflix as this is the first time that a Netflix show has ever picked up the award. Big Mouth and BoJack Horseman were nominated in the past, but neither brought the honor home. This is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you've already seen this show, but it's fantastic. Not. Like I've oh, heard man. great things. I've heard it's very good. It's based on the video game. Uh, oh my god, why am I blanking out on this video game right now? League of Legends. Hmm. It's based on League of Legends. It takes one of the characters or two of the characters from the the game and expands their character's world and their universe. Um, because every champion comes from different dimensions, I, I suppose. But um, but yeah, they they did replace the original voice actors. I heard, which is kind of a bummer, but. That being said, they did bring a lot of really talented voice actors to come in and replace those characters, and the new cast comes in, and I hear Yuri Lowenthal was in there, voice of Sasuke and Spider-Man. Hey. Pretty good stuff. But uh, overall, the, the show is fantastic. It's perfectly beautiful, and I'm so excited that this thing got nominated and won this program Emmy. Um, and, man, I'm I'm really surprised you haven't seen this, Raul. I haven't. I, this is one of the ones I have heard about a lot, and, and I, I, I think you were you were one of the people that told me, "Oh, you got to watch Arcane." You oh yeah. And, uh, I think our friend Kevin Afghani. Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen it, but it's really cool that uh, you know that these uh, these Netflix shows, these Netflix uh, you know animated shows, are starting to get some more recognition now. Um, I've seen a little bit of BoJack Horseman, a little bit of Big Mouth. Those are both really great shows. You know, Netflix, as far as animation goes, Netflix has been putting out some great content. Um, mm. So it's nice to see, you know, even though I haven't seen Arcane, but again, I've heard great things about it. It's nice to see one of these Netflix animated shows finally get some good recognition. So that's awesome. Plus, like, there, there's a blend of 2D and 3D animation in this show that's very oh. similar to Into the Spider-Verse kind of stuff. Like, oh, that's I think, cool. I think Into the Spider-Verse really blew up this style of animation because now you're starting to see it everywhere. There, even the, the new Puss in Boots movie that's coming out has this 2D, 3D frame rate change oh, really? animation that looks really cool. And Arcane was one of the first TV shows that started using that style and, like, made it look gorgeous and the storytelling is like hbo level like amazing story That's writing cool. uh very very good and for those of you who are like what's the story about it's you know without spoiling anything it's these two sisters who uh experience a lot of traumatic stuff growing up together but then you know they get they end up getting separated and have they end up having to reconnect but something is wrong with one of the siblings, and that's all I can really talk about. But it's very cool, mm. very fantasy, and uh, I highly recommend I'm everybody interested. check it out. I, I would like to check it out eventually. Um, but and yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. they are announcing a season two as well, because you know this oh, nice. is this is just too good to pass up. You know, especially if it's getting awards like this. Like, come on, you got to do more of this. And also, I'll add one more thing, and, and then we'll move on to our next topic. Here is, uh, I think. Every streaming service right now that's succeeding in all these things is just continuing to make Warner Brothers look bad. Because hmm. as we reported last month, you know, Warner Brothers was shutting down a bunch of animated shows yep. on their streaming services. Yep. Meanwhile, you got Netflix with one of the best shows ever be getting Emmys and nominations and Oscar, not Oscars, but you know what I mean? Like they're getting yeah. a bunch of great awards for all this stuff. So Warner Brothers, it's kind of a shame because it, it does show that, you know, you can put out some really good, um, really good animated content and, 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 and have it be, you know, very highly regarded. But it just, uh, right now, it just comes across that Warner Brothers doesn't really have too much faith in animated content. And they, I don't know, this probably, and, and maybe I'm assuming too much, but this does sound like echoes of, of the whole thing I've heard about how, like, you know, animation doesn't get the respect it deserves. And, and you know, we can, it, it's not just for kids. You can put out good quality, you know, story-driven, character-driven content um, and still have it be, you know, widely regarded. So, you know, it's just, yeah, when you compare it to Warner Brothers, it is kind of disheartening to hear, again, that Warner Brothers just doesn't have faith in the kind of animated stuff and is just taking it all down. So, 
but yeah, good on good on Netflix for putting this out there, and and it's really cool to see you know that it's kind of garnering this attention and these awards. So yeah. Oh yeah, and you know, speaking of awards, uh, we also have this new award thing for our next topic here. Uh, Brendan Fraser he gets a six minute ovation for mm-hmm. his movie The Whale. That's an award within itself, right? Um, good segue. Yeah, good yeah. segue. Very good. <laughs> nice job, Kevin. Really good. You're so awesome. Pat yourself on the back. Pat yeah. <laughs> myself on the back. Yeah. So we, we got this from Variety here. All right, guys, that's enough cheering. Thank you. Thank you. Settle Thank down. you. <laughs> Calm down, guys. It's not that cool. Um, but so we got this new article here from Variety telling us that uh, if the Sunday night world premiere of The Whale at the Venice Film Festival is any indication, Brendan Fraser's return to Hollywood will be met with plenty of cheers and even more tears. When the mm. credits rolled on the Darren Aronofsky drama in which Fraser plays a 600-pound gay man confined to a wheelchair, the actor was overcome with emotion. Fraser sobbed throughout the six-minute standing ovation, mm. which will likely put him in the forefront of this year's Best Actor Oscars race. Yeah. The Whale stars uh, Fraser as a man man living with severe obesity who struggles to reconnect with his 17-year-old daughter played by Stranger Things breakout star Sadie Sink. Um, I want to see this movie so bad, Raul. I, I want to see a see trailer this. for this movie. There hasn't been a trailer, right? There's no trailer? Yeah, I don't think there has been a trailer, but there's been a lot of footage uh, or, or, you know, pictures, I'm sorry, of, right, of the right. movie itself. And it looks really interesting. Like, yeah. I I can't believe... I, I think this might be one of the first movies where, like, I haven't seen the trailer, but I'm already in. Yeah. And I think there's a part of... Part of that is probably because of the fact that it's Brendan Fraser. And I'm kind of, like, I'm rooting for the guy to succeed. Cause yeah, I've I feel heard like of, we all are. Man, and for all, any of you who don't know anything about Brendan Fraser, he was a famous actor from the 90s and, you know, had a couple of sad decisions made in his life and you know, chose a few bad movies, got a divorce, and just everything started going downhill for him. And we really hadn't heard much of him until I think he showed up in uh, that that DC show um, as like the Tin Man, you know what oh, I'm talking the, about? Oh, the Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol. Yeah. He was the... I, his, his, name's, his name's definitely not Tin Man, though, is it? I think is it, what is it, Robot Man? <laughs> He's on. Iron I haven't Man. Seen, I haven't seen uh, Doom Patrol in a while. Well, he plays like this sad, like iron guy, like this dude covered in iron. Uh, he looks like it almost looks like the Iron Giant from the animated movie, but um, but not really. Um, <laughs> if you squint your eyes really hard, you know. Um, but no, it's it's a really, really, really good show. Uh, but also rooting for him from that show, and then he's he was supposed to be Firefly for the Batgirl movie, right? And that which got canceled. We saw footage of him playing you know, his, you know, Firefly in that movie as well. And he looked really cool. Um, but now finally this, I think this is going to be his moment where he's finally get going to get more love and attention that he deserves. Um, and also I, I think Brendan Fraser is also just like a meme kind of person. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard about this, but like he, uh, I think there was like an interview, like some, some fan won a competition or something where he got the chance to go on Skype or Zoom with Brendan Fraser to just talk to him for a few minutes. And the whole time, Brendan Fraser is just playing Super Smash Bros. on his Nintendo Switch. Oh, really? <laughs> so, like, the guy's trying to talk to him, and he's just like, uh-huh, yeah, that's really cool, yeah. That's, that's awesome. And it's like, you know, come on, Brendan. Like, I know I know you're not famous as much anymore, but, like, <laughs> give this guy some love. You know, he loves you back. He's having a comeback, yeah. I, I will say I'm I'm so happy to see this with Brendan Fraser. He's he's having a Fraser science, right? A it Fraser seems science. like uh, you know after being uh, kind of uh, out of the spotlight for a while, you know he had a, like you were saying he had some bad hands dealt uh, to Very him, and, and it's been kind of sad. If you look at we're we're not going to go into detail about it, but if, if you look up you know all the things that have that he had been struggling with for a while, it is kind of sad. And so it's nice to see somebody like this who seems like you know one of the sweetest actors ever, and everything I've heard about uh, people who've worked with Brendan Fraser have nothing but great things to say about him. It's nice to see. You know, it's always nice to see good things happen to good people, and it's just, yeah. you know, very heartwarming. And I saw the video of of him getting the standing ovation. God, it made me tear up so, so much because you really feel for the guy, and you're really just so happy that he's having this this comeback and this very strong comeback and and all this success. And God, like you said, I want to see this movie so bad, but we haven't even seen a trailer for it. I want to see a trailer. I wonder when they're gonna put that out. I'm just excited. I'm happy for him. I'm happy he's having this moment. And uh, I just hope good things continue to go from there with him. I know he's also been cast in a um, 
in a Martin Scorsese film, right? He's doing a Scorsese film. Wow, good for him. Holy crap. Yeah. It is uh, the Brendan Fraser science right now. What the heck? Yeah, he just recently got cast in, in a, yeah, in a, in a Scorsese. Well, listen, I, I think that if, if he ends up, you know, if they're, if they're, you know, they're talking about the whole Oscar nomination thing possibility, if that's the case, then that movie should be coming out very soon. Um, right. Which means I will be in theaters to watch it because I want to see that movie for sure. We should go together. We should go check it out. Let's do it. Yeah. But uh, when when does it come out? When does that Killers, Scorsese? Wait, hold on, really quick. So, Killers of the Flower Moon, I believe, is the, yep, yeah, it's the Martin Scorsese film with Brendan Fraser starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, wow. Jesse Clemens, wow. John Lithgow. I mean, wow. an all star cast here, and Brendan Fraser is is among one of those. So he's starting to work with you know with the likes of of Scorsese and DiCaprio and De Niro, and so uh, yeah, man, he's definitely having an uh, he's definitely having an upswing right now as far as his his comeback and his career is concerned so all right nerdy question for you raul yes uh 50 over under what are the chances that you're gonna see brendan frazier in the marvel cinematic universe oh i think it's likely at some point he will be i don't know who i don't know what what kind of character he could be but i feel like I feel like it's, you know, we're getting close to, in maybe just like five years, every actor who has ever existed <laughs> will have been a character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're getting closer and closer to that. So I have no doubt we'll probably see uh, Brendan Fraser at some point make an appearance there. So that, I think uh, the only I'd, people I'd say way over 50%. The only people who won't be in the Cinematic Universe, from what I've heard, is Leonardo DiCaprio and Timothée 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 Chalamet. Chalamet. Timothy because Chalumet. Apparently, I've heard I, him pronounce it in, in interviews. Timothy Timot Chalumet. Timothy. Timothy? Ugh, I don't Timothy. Like that. Timothy Chalumet. Anyway, I don't, I don't like that even more. <laughs> 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 I heard. I heard in an interview that Leonardo DiCaprio told Timothy Chalumet that uh, he was like, "Hey, listen, if you're gonna be a movie star, just don't do Marvel movies. That's all I ask you to do. Yeah. Like, don't <laughs> yeah. do porn and don't do Marvel movies because." <laughs> If you want to be like me, the top dog Leo DiCaprio, baby, then don't do any Marvel stuff. I'm sure he's just though. like that. Yeah, just like, hey, I'm what's... the top dog. You yeah, I'm the top dog. You want to be like me. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you're... whenever you hear someone say, and cut, he just goes, no, that was a great take, guys. A rad. Real cool like me, guys. Come on, boys. <laughs> this is where this impression is turning slowly into Cartman. <laughs> oh, it totally is. <laughs> you gotta hide the voice a little bit, guys. Yeah, hey, what you doing, guys? Hey, yeah. big. You ever seen Inception? It's a good movie. I'm Leo DiCaprio, guys. Come on. <laughs> oh God. But you know what? We we want to end this this these topics on a happier note than yes. that. Um, I mean, Brendan Fraser's thing. That's great news. It's already happy. Yeah. I know we've had some bad news, though, about Zazlav, and we've had some bad news about, you know, Mahershala Ali and Blaine and whatnot. But you know what's really great, Raul? What is great, Kevin? What's great? Let me tell you what's really great. Tell you me, know tell me, been, Kevin. Something that's been kind of making us happy throughout this episode, and let me just say, we've sneakily snuck it in. Little Ryan Reynolds action over here. We got <laughs> Deadpool 3 confirmed to have Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, baby. Oh, yes. oh snap, bro. Well, what do we got written here? All right. Well, looks like, uh, yeah, we got the, from, this is coming from Collider. Reynolds took to his official Twitter page to give more than, uh, to give more than anyone would have possibly expected. A confirmation of the film's release date for September 6, 2024, and the announcement that Hugh Jackman Who? will be returning to his beloved role as Wolverine. And I, I will <laughs> yeah. always love Hugh. So, so for those of you who haven't seen it, Ryan Reynolds po posted a brief video on Twitter. Uh, basically, it's just Oh, him. and it was a glorious video. It was great. It was a great view. It, <laughs> it's just him like talking about you know the development of, of Deadpool 3 and what he's working on, blah, 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 blah. He didn't really give much details, but he was like, one thing I will tell you, right? He, he was basically, I will tell you this. This. And then as he's saying that, slowly a figure comes walking behind Ryan Reynolds across the room and just like starts walking upstairs. And it turns out the figure is none other than Hugh Jackman. And Ryan Reynolds is basically like, hey, Hugh, we... <laughs> Would you like to come back and play Wolverine? I'm doing a terrible Ryan Reynolds. That was beautiful. He's like, hey, would you Very like good. to come back and, and play Wolverine one last time? And, <laughs> and then Hugh Jackman is just like slowly walking up the stairs and casually is like, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, Ryan. <laughs> 
And then it oh. ends with, yeah, and then it ends with Whitney. And I... <laughs> yeah. Over the Deadpool oh, 3 man. logo, Deadpool 3 logo with with the three claw marks across the, the three, Deadpool baby. logo. Deadpool 3! Oh, and then I, so love, I love the pun. I so appreciate the pun, coming hewn. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That just killed me right there. So um, good. Yeah, this is I know we don't really do top stories on this show, but if we did that sort of thing, this is our favorite this, one. This is this would be our top story, right? This is the big one. This came out like uh a couple days ago, right? When Ryan Reynolds posted this. Um they also posted another video where they were like basically they're like, "Hey, uh you got questions, right? I have questions. You have questions. We all yeah, have questions. Totally. Well, yeah, we got here's, answers. Here's the deal, you know. And they basically uh, address <laughs> the fact that you know Logan, you know, they're like, oh well, he died in Logan, right? And then basically Ryan Reynolds says that that's a standalone thing. We're not going to touch that. We're right? not going to touch it. And then they continue to go on and say, well, we we also have other details, and they start talking. But wake me hear, up before you go. You can't go hear what those details are because you've got like whams. Wake go. me up before you go go <laughs> playing over them. It's just kind of a funny little thing. So good. And you know, it was more of a funny video than than anything else. But we did get the little nugget of info that. Of course, and we kind of all figure this, right? Logan has nothing to do with uh, Wolverine's uh, appearance in Deadpool 3. So it's uh. kind of, even. in fact, James Mangold, the director of Logan, has come out and said, he's already said, like, Logan, yeah, it's its own universe. So it doesn't even have anything to do with. So is this, uh, that being the case, Kevin. Yeah. Is, hey, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Yes. I'd uh, like to is you. this Wolverine gonna be the Wolverine, the the main Wolverine that we've seen in the in the main X Men films, or is this a totally different Wolverine altogether? I have been uh, waiting for you to ask me this question for ooh, the past yes. thirty hours, and I am ready to give you my response to this. All right, here's what I think: multiverse is, is a mess, right? So oh, yeah. I think. All right, all right, okay. Strap your strap your seatbelts in, Raul. Right, this is what I go. got for you. Here we go. So here's how the story is going to start, right? We got Deadpool. <laughs> end of Deadpool 2, right? He's got his timed... My smile... I'm smiling so hard about this right I now that my this. face hurts. It. it hurts from the smiling. So we got Deadpool at Deadpool 2. Time machine, going back in time, doing different timeline stuff and changing stuff up. He goes back in time so often that he messes up the timeline. Hmm. And so now he has to try to figure out how to fix the timeline again, which means he Ooh. has to stop himself from killing baby Hitler. He has to stop himself from over-saving over Vanessa. He has to, like, do a million other things to make sure everything's okay. He has to prevent himself from dying after uh -huh. writing Green Lantern. Uh, and so in trying to do that, he accidentally jumps into a random timeline where Wolverine is still alive. So this is going to be a random Wolverine, okay, From but from the universe of the X-Men universe that we know okay. and love, but just a random age where he hasn't met the X-Men yet, but he already has his adamantium metal stuff or whatever, right? All right, wait, stay like with that. me here. I like here's, that. Here's, the, here's what else I got here. So okay. he meets him, and he's like, you bastard, because you died before I got the chance to hang out with you. He goes after him, starts trying to kill Wolverine. Wolverine starts trying to kill him back, and then in their fight, the two of them mess up the, the time warp watch, and they both get sent to another timeline. This is very specific. This is very specific. I've been thinking about this, Raul. Okay, yeah, they get, I can they get tell sent. you have. Now they get sent to another timeline, uh -huh. and then now it's going to be a buddy cop movie of the two of them having to figure out together how to get Wolverine back to his timeline. This is a lot packed into one And movie. so trying to do that he's they got this annoyed like they they're butting heads with each other because they hate each other so much mm. but then by the end of the movie what's going to happen is after all their turmoil and adventure they find wolverine and they get him back to his original timeline and by the end deadpool's going to be like you know you're a pretty all right guy like i think you're pretty cool and then he tries to goes back to his own timeline and then he gets sent to the mcu by accident and he meets the new Wolverine, and he's like, oh, my God. All right, this is new, but okay, we'll see where this goes. <laughs> so to answer your question, Raul, mm. I think it's a different Wolverine. All Wolverine. right, there we go. That's yeah, the answer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, but you know what? You know what I do like about your theory is yeah. the whole Deadpool jumping around time, the, you know, the, the timelines and screwing things up because that's a great opportunity 
for them to explain why the main X-Men continuity is so messed up and all over the place. It's oh, like you find yeah. out in Deadpool 3, it's actually revealed why the reason why nothing, you know, the timeline in the X-Men movies doesn't make any sense is because Deadpool messed it all up. And ah! that would be a brilliant way to explain that. That's beautiful. I love that. I, I that is beautiful. I think that's great. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that would be a great way for, for them to kind of clean everything up and explain why the X-Men continuity is all messed up. De it was Deadpool's fault. One of my favorite things also is the fact that Kevin Feige and like the MCU team has basically told Ryan Reynolds and his writers like, hey, do whatever you want with any of our characters and we'll green light it. Like, just go for it. You're Ryan Reynolds. Everybody I, I will love, love it. That. So anything could happen if he wanted to i would i wouldn't be surprised if ryan reynolds decided to kill all the x-men in these timelines and he's just i don't know if they're gonna do the deadpool kills shop. the marvel universe or deadpool kills yeah. the x-men i don't know if kevin feige would be too keen <laughs> on a movie where deadpool is killing a whole bunch of people uh a whole bunch of the the main characters in the marvel cinematic oh, but how universe. glorious would that be it would be cool that they would adapt that story but I don't the know. only way, I think the only way that that could happen is if he goes to a different universe or a different timeline where he's allowed to kill all those characters and then come back to the MCU, you know, because obviously we don't want to see him kill Rhodey and Riri Williams and, you know, all our characters that we already know and love at the moment because they've got stories to tell, you know, so send Deadpool into another universe, give him the opportunity to kill everybody. <laughs> so now when he shows up to the MCU, it's like, bro, you don't know what to expect from this character. What an introduction to Deadpool entering the MCU. Like, I genuinely don't believe that he's going to be in the MCU until the end of Deadpool 3. That's what that I think. That could be. That could be the case. Honestly, I give... Look, as far as continuity and, you know, what, does this make sense with that? What kind of... What kind of... Uh, what version of Wolverine are we going to see? Are we going to see this? I don't care about any of those things, honestly, because it's a Deadpool movie. Because mm. it's a Deadpool movie, any inconsistencies or whatever, I just give it a pass because it's a Deadpool movie and, and they they could easily just write it off as a joke, some sort of self-referential thing, like, hey, we're do you know, we're Disney now, we're changing everything up, whatever, I don't know. They'll just self you know, they'll just make a comment or a, a joke about it, and then we'll move on. That's why I don't take any of this stuff seriously when it comes to Deadpool. It's just yeah. like, whatever, they do whatever the hell they want, it's Deadpool, we all know it's Deadpool, we all know nothing makes sense and that they're gonna make jokes about it, and we just move on, you know, we get a mulligan, so. Yeah, I'm excited. I think this is great. You know, I've got my Wolverine shirt on. I'm so excited yeah. when I see Hugh Jackman come back one last time, or at least I think it will be, donning the claws. Um, yeah, this has to be his last one, right? Well, do, do you think that that's his last time, or do you think he'll at least show up for Secret Wars? <sighs> One, oh, one, one last, last time. I, okay, I was thinking this would be the last one, but now you mentioned Secret Wars. I don't know. Maybe mm. if he does show up, it's got to be very briefly because I, he, I think he's done after this. I don't think he wants to play the character anymore after this. This is supposed to be his last time playing Wolverine, mm. you know, uh, because now it's like we're going to give somebody else a chance to play Wolverine. It sounds like we're just, you know, when we when we get to X-Men, whenever the hell that's going to be, I don't know, Marvel, what are we doing with mutants? Let me know. Let the world know. Anyway, when we get to that eventually, I'm assuming it's going to be all new cast, uh, different actors coming in to play these characters. So, you know, it's it's time for uh, for um, Hugh Jackman to pass the baton now. Yeah, right? I, I think it's it's his goodbye for sure. But, like, I think it's more... It's more of like finally, com you know, uh, doing a complete full circle with Deadpool because <clears throat> Deadpool, since the beginning of his movies, has always had that inside joke about Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Oh, yeah. And the fact that we'd never get the chance to see them interact with each other for real was really kind of a bummer. So it was nice to see that it is a trilogy of films and the third movie ends the Fox universe, basically, and says, that's it. This is the finale. We're transitioning into this thing because yeah. this is what this is the last thing anybody everybody wanted was Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds finally being in a project together. And it's directed by the guy who worked on Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. And that's going to be so cool. Sean Levy, I think his Sean name was. Sean Levy, yep. Sean Levy. I think that's going to be awesome. Free Guy and The Adam Project, which I, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, same here. Yeah. 
Good movie, good movie. I, I'm super stoked. I think this is fun. We're going to see Deadpool and Wolverine kind of technically do a rematch because we, we kind of saw them uh, go head-to-head -head in X-Men Origins Wolverine, <laughs> which is terrible. But... Imagine, imagine just the scene. Hugh Jackman gets knocked out by Wolverine, wakes up with his mouth sewn shut. Oh, and Deadpool's like, yeah, how do you like that, huh, buddy? Hey, Wolvie, <laughs> come on, buddy. We're going to kill you. Yeah. Ah! Doesn't feel so great on the other end, does it? Then Wolverine pulls out one of his claws and kind of just cuts the strings out of his mouth and is like, ah, I'll He's kill you. Heels. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. How, that's how, disturbing. That's also just so amazing, the fact that not only, not only is it going to be disturbing, but it's going to be rated R. So we get yes. a Wolverine that gets to swear, just like in Logan. Oh. But now it's a comedic rated R with, with Hugh Jackman's Oh, I want to hear, hear Hugh Jackman's Wolverine drop all the F-bombs. Oh, yes. All the F-bombs. And you know, based on even just the, the second video that Ryan and Hugh Jackman put together, that Hugh Jackman, like, claws Deadpool in the head and rips it out, and then Deadpool's like... Oh, no. There is a panel in the comics where Wolverine and Deadpool are fighting, and they essentially recreate the panel when they were kind of miming what they were doing as as the the music was playing oh, and yeah. they were like miming like specifically a panel from the comics where he's got his claws <laughs> in Deadpool's head and then Deadpool's got the sword in in <laughs> in Wolverine's head uh so yeah. good and they you know they're going to have to do something like that in the movie as well cuz like that's oh, just yeah. That's They're just, just fighting each service. other, and the, the fight lasts like you know two hours because they keep just keep healing, and they just they're not getting. They're like, look, we're not getting anywhere with this. Can we just move on? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And, and you know for a fact also that once Ryan Reynolds Deadpool meets the next Wolverine, I'm I'm assuming the next Wolverine's gonna be like five foot two or something like that. <laughs> he's gonna be much shorter, and Ryan Reynolds is like six two. Yeah. And he's gonna look down and be like. Oh, Oh my god it's a mini wolvie oh boy you know like there's gonna be such awesome jokes where are your parents sides. like exactly i don't see kevin hart anywhere you know like <laughs> i i think that that could be so good ryan reynolds his marketing also is just freaking brilliant oh, he's brilliant everything he puts out with um his production company maximum so effort good. from from the aviation gin commercials to the mint mobile stuff to all his social media stuff to the deadpool movies i mean so it's good. just so great i love his marketing and i love i love following ryan reynolds on social media he's like oh, one yeah. of my favorite people to follow on social media everything he puts out is just oh it's, I, it, it's just gold also, I will say, I know in, in the D23 episode, we kind of complained a lot about, like, no Deadpool announcement? What is oh, this? But yeah. after I saw the first announcement by Ryan Reynolds himself, I kind of prefer it that way. Mm. Like I, I, it hit me how much more of an impact it had that he did it himself. And, like, it's not this big group, group activity thing. It's about Ryan Reynolds. Like, Ryan Reynolds is a superstar, man. Like, that man, he is not Benedict Cumberbatch. You know, he's not, like, <laughs> this character that needs everybody around him to, like, help support him. He just does it himself. He and is goes, his own Boom. brand. Ryan is Reynolds his own is brand. his own brand. Oh, and so really I, quick, I love I love oh. Benedict Cumberbatch. By the way, I no 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 hate towards Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> we love you, Benedict. Yeah. Um, love you, Benedict. <laughs> really quick, let me ask you something really quick, and then we'll move on. Yeah. So here's my question, because D twenty three, it was only like what a couple weeks ago. It was very recent. Mm. Do you think this is something that they were going to maybe announce at D23, but for whatever reason they didn't? I mean, why not just announce this then as opposed to now? Uh, I think, I bet you a million bucks that Hugh Jackman just hadn't signed contracts yet. You think that's what it was? Yeah. Uh, that's it, gotta it, have been it. It wasn't ready. Like, yeah. I, know, I know I just said that whole thing about like, he's a superstar, he should do it himself. Because yeah. really, the way he did it now, it worked out perfectly. Oh, Everybody, yeah. It's, uh, I love everybody's the way talking this. about it. It's yeah. such a hype thing to do, you know? Like, yeah. although I, I would have been just as hyped probably if he had done it at the end of D23, just to yeah. have that button to it say just this is worth wonder. it. Because of the lack of big announcements that came out of D23, and, you know, we've already talked at ad nauseum about our kind of somewhat disappointment with D23, I just wonder if this is something that maybe they could have announced that at D23, but like you're saying, yeah, yeah. maybe they just didn't have it ready. Man, or, if I was... Or what? Raul, if I was Kevin Feige and I knew I had Deadpool 3 with Hugh Jackman locked in, 
I'd want to show that at D23. You'd think. You would like, think. That would, it, that is yeah. just such a no-brainer of how, yeah. like, if I know all we're going to do is just talk about all the trailers and movies that we've already seen and talked about, yeah. then it's like, how can I hype these people up? Oh, I got it. St- Rogers the Musical. Let's put that on stage. <laughs> like, that's what you could come up with to try to remedy yeah. not having Deadpool as an announcement. So, again, yeah, I, I think going back to what we were saying, I think Hugh Jackman probably didn't sign contracts yet. And once he finally was able to just be like, okay, we have a deal and this is how much money I want to make, mm. then they were like, okay, cool. Also, yeah. I don't know if you saw this, but there was like a, there's some random paparazzi guy that saw Hugh Jackman coming out of the gym like a day ago. And he was like, hey, Hugh, like, I'm so psyched for you, man. You're going to be a great Wolverine. And Hugh Jackman's just like, oh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. And he's, yeah. and the, the paparazzi guy asks him, so what did Disney do to get you back? How did they convince you? <laughs> And Hugh Jackman kind of got up close to the camera and he goes, like, uh, hey, I, I make my own decisions, man. Like, that's that's it. And I just thought, like, man, what a cool dude. What a <laughs> badass. He makes his own goddamn decisions. He's only in this movie because he wants to be. Yeah. So he I, does, I, I, I believe it. He loves being this character. Oh, Hugh Jackman yeah. loves being Wolverine. And that's why there, there is a part of me that's like, you know, if I'm Hugh Jackman and I'm coming back again and I'm in my 50s, I want this much money before you bring me back. <laughs> and then Kevin Feige goes, okay, but but hey, D23 is about to happen. I don't care about D23. <laughs> I want my money. And if you don't give me my money, I'm not signing anything yet. So if we got to skip D23, that's fine by me, man. You know who I am, Kevin Feige. I love you to death. But this is how much I require. I'm this old. Like, I'm not listen, too sure that maybe that's how it went Maybe down. that's not how it went. I happened, like to but... think Hugh Jackman is a, is a more humble man than that, but... Yeah, but, but for sure, know. I'm sure they would have negotiated something. It was a really good amount of money for him. I'm sure. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a funny. beautiful thing, though. Either way, uh, I'm excited. I just I want to see Hugh Jackman come hmm. back as Wolverine. I can't wait to see him. Raul, well, one more this, question, and I swear to God, we'll move yeah, right yeah. on. Is over under fifty percent? <laughs> is over under? What are you doing? Is Hugh Jackman gonna be in the yellow suit? Oh. I hope so. At least for at least for a brief sake, I, 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 over, way over. over. Maybe yeah, way over fifty percent. Because they're gonna have to make a callback to it. They're gonna have to reference it. Maybe he won't wear it for very long, but you know, it might be like a like oh, he'll wear it for a brief second. They'll make a joke about it, then he'll go change, right? Yeah. But they have to. How can they not? And I know they will. I just, yeah. I'm so confident they're gonna make. Hugh Jackman, we will see him in the classic Wolverine outfit with the cowl and everything, the yellow outfit. We are going to see that. That I'm making that prediction. Okay. We will see that. You know, you just prompted me to ask you one last question. I swear we're going to move on. (laughs) Yeah. Is uh, if they do put him in the suit. Yeah. Do you think that it'll take away hype from our next Wolverine getting in a suit and trying to introduce him? Not necessarily. Okay. All right. Okay. Because it's a Deadpool well, he's, movie. He's going to have to have a different again, suit too. Again, I don't know. You, when you go into a Deadpool movie, I feel like coming out of the Deadpool movie, everything that happened in the dead, it's like Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in, in Vegas. Oh yeah. What happens in Deadpool stays in Deadpool unless Marvel decides to pull something from it. So mm. I'm not going to be if they don't de- if they decide not to give the new Wolverine a suit or whatever. I'm not going to worry about it because I'll know. You, we all will know that they only had, they will have at least had him wear the suit in Deadpool three as a joke at the very least. Oh yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, whatever. We'll see. We'll see what happens. That's just how it is. All right, guys. Well then, uh, God, as much as I could gush about Ryan Reynolds and and Hugh Jackman, we do have to move on. Those are our top (laughs) ten stories of this month of September. Of this mother freaking September, I thought you were going to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> mother freaking. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we I'm going to list off some trailers that were recently uh, presented to us this past month. And uh, we're going to talk about maybe a couple that really stood out to us. And so, let's see. We've got the trailer for Star Trek Picard Final Season. We got the trailer for Welcome to Chippendales. We got the Tulsa King. We got Black Adam trailer number two. We got the Hellraiser trailer. We got the I Want to Dance with Somebody trailer. And finally, we got the Halloween Ends final trailer. Mm. Raul, are there any trailers here that really stuck out to you that you really want to discuss today? Um, I will say, looking at this Hellraiser trailer, 
I'm really excited about Hellraiser. And there's already been kind of whispers coming out. I think they've released some uh, review embargoes for this movie saying this movie is indeed, if not better than the original, just as good as the original Hellraiser. So I'm super excited about it. I'm like, damn, Hulu. Okay, I see you. I see what you're doing. You can put damn. out Prey. First of all, Prey, oh which my was God, phenomenal. That's, right. that's a Hulu movie. That was, that was a Hulu both, original. They're both Hulu? They're both Hulu originals, yes. Wow. So you, you got Prey. And that turned out to be really good. I mean, I love that movie. It was phenomenal. And now you got Hellraiser, which the trailer looks freaking good. And now we're starting to hear that it's it's it actually is good. I'm kind of like looking at Hulu, like, all right, I Whoa. I see you. I hope to see, let's see what else you do down the down the line with your original films. Dude. Um, it, it looks great. It looks super intense and scary. And, you know, we got uh, a reimagining of the characters. We got a new pinhead, which she looks scary as hell. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of the first, uh, really the first two Hellraisers. Um, three, I thought three was, was pretty good. But I think anything after, from four on was just terrible. And uh, <laughs> I've, I have heard that a lot of the movies after like three or four were basically scripts written as another movie. And they just decided, well, let's just make these a Hellraiser movie. And so they kind of shoehorned it in to being a Hellraiser movie. And it, they just didn't work. Yeah. But I think I really love the first two. And I'm so hoping that this one's good and it, everybody's saying it sounds good. And so I've got high hopes for it. The trailer looks, again, it looks great. Is it sad that when you said Pinhead, I just thought of Patrick Starr? Who are you calling Pinhead? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen, have you seen the original? <laughs> I actually, I have not seen any of the Hellraiser movies. And I would I, definitely I check well, we, out. Yeah, we were talking one. about this earlier. I, I oh, haven't we seen were. any of them, but like. I do want to watch that first one because everybody has been telling me lately, you got to watch the first one. At least the first one. If you want to watch the second one, I, I would encourage it. But and mm. maybe the third one if you're feeling like it. But anything after three, just don't even touch. Maybe uh, that first Hellraiser should be my movie of the month then. Ooh, that's cool. Well, um, if you already know you're going to watch it, I, I don't know. I want to give ah, you. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, uh, I think for me, the, the trailer that really stuck out is the I Want to Dance with Somebody trailer with Whitney Houston. Because uh, the actress who plays Whitney Houston in this movie, uh, to me, just like, I thought it was Whitney Houston for half a second. Um, <laughs> and then you hear her voice and you're like, oh, snap. I think it's like, it's also one of those things where it's like, uh, it's just like every single musical biopic film ever. Mm. The oh, random person who suddenly, you know, starts talking about how much they love music and then they start to practice and they get really good and amazing at it. Then an agent notices them and then gets them to start going on tour. Yeah. Then they Very record their first album. Yeah. And then they do drugs and then they get all their friends to go away. And then they, they're supposed to get back from drugs and go back to being a good Samaritan again. But Winnie Houston has the opposite problem and she just dies so you know spoiler alert yeah, for all you yeah. people who didn't read the bible um so <laughs> that's, that's what? i don't know what i'm talking about anymore but i am excited to see this movie because i'm sure it'll be really fun and it's from the guys who made uh the freddie mercury biopic with the bohemian rhapsody so oh, bohemian rhapsody yeah yeah okay. i think it's gonna be a good movie yeah okay we'll see yeah this one didn't really draw my attention very much but uh yeah. I mean, then screw you, we'll, man. But for the same re well, for the same reasons you said, I'm like, all right, these 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 biopics, these musician musical biopics, whatever. I'm I'm just kind of like, yeah. On I these. feel you. Like I said, they're so like you said, they're so formulaic, and it's we all know how it happens. You know, there are some exceptions. There are some exceptions like Elvis. I really enjoyed Elvis, but I mostly was interested in that for the visual stylings of uh, God. What's it, Boz Lerman? Yeah. Um, you know, I thought that that kind of more than anything drew me in as far as wanting to watch it. And then I watched it and I, I ended up liking it. Um, so there are a few exceptions, but for the most part, I just can't get into these uh, musical biopics, you know, yeah. be to because me, of how it's, it's more about the are. music to me. Like it's more about the music. Cause once you understand like, that's yeah. what the storylines always usually are with these celebrities. I'm just there to be like, Oh, what it is with somebody. Oh, you know, you you're going to walk out of that movie singing all of the Whitney Houston songs. Yeah. Heck, either, Ryan Reynolds even used the end. Yeah. yeah. She even loves Hugh Jackman too. That's crazy. But I think, <laughs> I think it's going to be really cool. And I, I can't wait for the movie to come out. That one comes out on December 21st and mm. Hellraiser comes out in, on October 7th. Oh, I'm so excited. So, it's just right around the corner. Literally in six days from this episode oh, coming exactly out. Exactly so. a week. 
Yeah. Yeah. Exactly a week from exactly today. Exactly a week. We should do a movie night and do this. We should Ooh, totally let's watch do that. Hulu. Let's do that. Um, but listen, let's move on to our out this month movies. Uh, this month, what came out would recently was, well, this at the end of the month, Smile comes out. That's today, actually. What am I talking about? We got Bros. We got Honk for Jesus. We had the Pinocchio movie on Disney+. Plus. We had Barbarian in theaters. We had The Woman King that came out. We also have Don't Worry Darling. We got The Monsters. We got Hocus Pocus 2, which just came out today on the 30th of September, which is mm. when we were recording. Uh, Andor continued to come out. We had She-Hulk continuing, Rings of Power continuing, and House of the Dragon continuing. Which, boy, is it a great time to be a nerd because those shows <laughs> are fantastic. Um, I, you know, half of them are. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. I, I'm, I'm enjoying them as, as they are. But... Uh, you figure out which ones I don't like as much, I guess, people listening. Um, but Raul, out of all these projects or all these movies, have you seen any of these that stick out to you? Like, what what are you thinking? Well, the only one I've actually seen other than She-Hulk, uh, I haven't started Andor yet. I'm so behind on that. I'm behind on a couple episodes of She-Hulk, and I've heard great things about Andor. I'm so excited to watch Andor. I've heard amazing things. And yeah, I'm behind on She-Hulk. Haven't started Rings of Power. Um, you haven't started no, Rings of I Power? No, I haven't because we've... I, I, you've probably started ah! it, right? You've started it, yeah. I'm up to date, baby! I know. we're not. It looks like we're not going to do our weekly gatherings for that. But, we'll watch the finale together. That's okay, that doing. sounds fair. The finale. Um, But yeah, I haven't started it. It's just been really busy. <gasps> Honestly, other than She-Hulk... Uh, <laughs> This is so sad. The only thing oh, I've seen man. is The Woman King. We went to see The Woman King uh, together, and I thought that was a great movie. It was so phenomenal. I mean, God, uh, Viola Davis, she is she is so powerful. I mean, uh, she is she's definitely a powerhouse uh, of, of an actress. So I really enjoyed The Woman King. I thought it was great. Woman King was awesome. Yeah, yeah. it was awesome. Um, we, so really, we went that's to the one I have together. to... What's that? We, we, we both saw it together, and it was... Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm really... saying fun experience and uh i think personally there's a lot of drama behind that movie too like a lot of mm. people talking about the whole slavery thing and you know at, at the end of the day like I, I i know that i can go online and educate myself when it great, comes to these topics great is, action too yeah action but in that yeah at, so at the end of the day the story of the movie like just removing the history in my brain like no i don't think you should go into a biopic movie or a historical quote-unquote movie and assume that all of this is true i learned something today no, you were informed about a topic by watching this movie. The yeah. point of this movie is to entertain you. So as someone who sat down and watched the movie with you as well, we both enjoyed the hell out of the movie. It was really fun, great action. And also the the actors were fantastic. They were um you can't have Viola Davis and say, Oh, that was an okay movie. You know right. what I mean? Like that's that's freaking great. Um but also I went to go watch Don't Worry Darling, which also had a lot of like controversy behind it. Ah, and that one has been very interesting from what I've heard. Personally, I'll the say this. The scenes. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna you know, let everybody know right now, it's a good movie. It's a it's a good movie. However, I think uh Harry Styles I can see exactly why they wanted Shia LaBeouf originally. Hmm. Like, I, I understand 100% how much better of a movie it would have been if performance-wise we had Shia LaBeouf instead of Harry Styles. Interesting. Because that character was meant for Shia LaBeouf. And, uh, you know, Harry Styles did his best. I'm not going to say he's a bad actor. I think he was decent. But this role wasn't for him. And so... I, from everything I've heard from people... I'm sorry, Kevin. I didn't mean to No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. From everything I've heard from people, this movie... The the behind the scenes stories that have been coming out about this movie are way more interesting than the narrative than the story of this movie itself. Yeah. <laughs> that I've heard. So it, it is kind of it is kind of a shame that all the behind the scenes drama behind the making of this movie and stuff has kind of overshadowed the movie. Um well, I guess it would be a shame, I guess, if the movie was good, right? But from what I'm hearing, the movie, other than you, but I've heard mostly mixed to negative reactions about this movie. Yeah, I like, I'm not going to say it was like Oscar worthy, though, is the thing. I, yeah. I will say, though, that Olivia Wilde is a good director. I, did mm. I like uh, her, her, this movie more than her Booksmart movie? No, Booksmart was way better. She has... But she has a perfect director's eye for these types of movies and what she wants to work on. When she has a vision, she makes that very clear what she wants the movie to be like. 
Um, but yeah, you're right. The drama behind the scenes, that was just, yeah, it was too much. I, no. I, that's why I was like, damn it, let me just go watch this movie so I can stop worrying about the behind the scenes stuff and just judge the movie for what it is myself, you know? Right. If I didn't know any of those behind the, the scenes stuff, then I can still honestly say that it's a good movie. You know, it's it's good. It's like, to me, it's an 8 out of 10. That's what I'd say. All right, then. Or well, 7.9 out of 10. That's what I'll say. I'll okay. Seven, it's a 7.9 out of 10. Not that that makes that much of a difference, but, you know. Point nine. Point All nine. All right, then. Well, nice. Those are those are the movies uh, from this month that we saw or didn't see. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll be honest. We I feel like I didn't see a lot of these lately. Uh, I know. I've been I don't want to see the monsters, okay? There's just okay? so you can't make much. Me. Th- yeah. Don't, the, the monsters, <laughs> for sure, I'm not watching. There's the just so much me. coming out. And I can't keep up with all. Well, this coming month, we're in the as as you're hearing this now, guys. You in the audience, it is now the month of October. So I'm hoping to see a lot of the Hellraiser for sure. Of course, we're gonna watch Hocus Pocus too. We're gonna I can't watch, wait you know, to watch Black we, Adam. Uh, we're gonna watch Black Adam in theaters, but uh, I'd like to watch Smile and I'd like to watch Barbarian at some point. So we'll see if we can make it out to the theater for that. But also, yeah. uh, just so you guys know, our next episode that's gonna be posted, we're we're gonna try to work on a Black Adam review episode. Right. So look out for that. We're when... actually going to review a DC movie this time. Yeah, buddy. So, and then, you know, we'll see how it is. I know I've had strong emotions and opinions about Zazlav and the WB stuff that's going on right now, but I want to just hope it's a good movie and I have a fun time going into it. But speaking of movies, because that's what we've been talking about, boys, we got our movie of the month challenge yes. that we got to end here with. A quick segment where we challenge each other to watch a movie where we, that we haven't seen yet. This episode's movies of the month were The Intouchables for Raul, and for me, it was The Apartment, the 1960 version with Jack Lemmon. That's right. So, Raul, let's start with you, my guy. The Untouchables. Did the you get the in- chance to see it? And in- what did you think? I did watch The Untouchables. Man, this is such a great movie. Very quotable. Everything from Robert De Niro's I want them dead, I want them all dead, oh, to yeah. Sean Connery's <laughs> hey, oh. if you, he brings a knife, you'll bring a gun. That's oh. the Chicago way. No. <laughs> Uh, wait, I'm no. kidding! Uh, uh, I'm oh, no. kidding! <laughs> oh no, that's so that sad. That is, of course, I'm referencing the Untouchables. This is the Intouchables, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> I had you there for a minute, didn't I? So sad. <laughs> that's the Chicago way. Great movie, by the way. The that is a very good movie. Yeah. Uh, so, the Intouchables. Yes, I did watch the Untouchables. Um, I... I loved this movie so much. This was a, a very pleasant watch. Uh, I, I love... Um, the the actors, the character dyna- dynamic, and I'm not that familiar with the actors, expect, ex- except for Omar Sy, who mm-hmm. is one of the, the main uh, actors in this movie. Uh, I know him from uh, as Bishop from Days of Future Past. He oh, was yeah. Bishop in Days of Future uh, He's also in the Jurassic World movies uh, as the That's other right. the other raptor handler alongside Chris Pratt. So I've seen him in other stuff, these kind of side characters, but it was refreshing to see him actually you know, be one of the main characters of this movie, speaking, you know, his own language, you know, which, you know, it's, it's just, I, and I watched this, I didn't watch this dubbed or anything. I watched this with subtitles and stuff and man, you really get invested in the characters and such a wonderful, beautiful movie. And you find out this is uh, based on true events, right? This is this yeah. movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's based on true events. Um, and it's and also it, the, the, it's the original version, which I, if, for the, they those who are listening with yeah. Kevin, with Kevin Hart. Hart and Brian Cranston. What was the name of the the American version? The Upside. The Upside. I looked it up. The Upside. Yeah. So if you which, saw The Upside, this was the better version of it, which was French. The original French version. Yeah. yeah I, I love this. I thought this was great. They have great chemistry. It's so heartwarming and funny. I, I was surprised by how funny this movie is. It's actually yeah. very funny. But... Um, but yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, um, I thought it was very nice. Good. Oh man, yeah. that's awesome. I'm glad you liked it, man. I, I haven't seen it in so long, but I remember when I finished the movie, um, I was with my parents and we kind of just, I don't know, like we just, it just felt like the rest of the day could be a beautiful one, you know, right. and we, we, we could make the best out of everything and out of life. Um, but now for, for me, I saw this movie called The Apartment from 1960 with Jack mm-hmm. Lemmon and, uh. I, I got to tell you, I did like it. All However, right. I did like 12 Angry Men more. Okay, okay. But it was still a very good movie. Um, I, you know, without spoiling too much, I did find myself getting so mad at the main character because he was just being such a pushover all the time right. about That's the apartment. The idea. 
Ah, so when when you finally get him to stand up for himself, it's kind of just like this. Finally, like oh my god, yes! Like, yeah, yeah. dude, what are you waiting for? Right. Sorry, guys, that totally spoiled it. But it was it came out in 1960, whatever. Um, <laughs> it, Spoilers I, for a like a, a 60 year old movie. <laughs> also, I I found myself just you know seeing the the character interactions and and thinking to myself like yeah this would have this would be awesome to watch as like a staged play like this looks really cool like i would love to see this um I, 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 was it based on a play was it based on a play i feel I think like I remember it's the... you told me that there no no i think you were thinking about showing me another Who's afraid movie of virginia wolf was based That's on the a one. play and yeah. so was 12 angry men yeah 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 well, I do like the idea of staying in one place all the time, but this one was really good because they do shift back to like the office spaces and then back to home to the yeah. apartment. Um, but yeah, I think that all the characters had really cool stuff to do. I will admit some of the, you know, the, the only thing I wish that they would have done was that the four higher ups that were like trying to mess with the main character all the time, I feel like they could have done a little bit more towards the end of the movie, but it, it's almost as though we all kind of just said, ah, forget them now. They're not important. And I was like, oh, okay, there's like no button on top for these guys. But I did enjoy the movie. It was really cool. Um, and boy, are there is there a plot twist like 30 minutes into the movie mm-hmm. that made me go, wait, whoa, I did not see that coming. Um, and usually I, I'm that kind of guy where I'm watching a movie and I go, I bet you this is happening and this is going to happen and this character is going to say that. Right. And then those things happen and I go, yeah. So it's nice when I get kind of thrown off by something because I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, now you have my divided, my undivided attention. Not my divided attention. That wouldn't make any sense at all. But anyways, you know what I'm trying to say, Raul. Yeah. <laughs> all right then, gents. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. I, I'm. It's been a long day so far. Has it now? Has it been entirely? But you know what makes it great is Ryan Reynolds, as always, which is why we're here to talk about Mint Mobile. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. We're not (laughs) kidding. We're not sponsored by anybody. I wish. Ryan, please help us. Um, (laughs) Moving on. Unfortunately. Moving on to next month's movies. uh, We're going to challenge each other right now really quick. So, Raul, what do you got for me for next month's movie challenge? All right. Well, as we know, we're head, we're in the month of October now. It's spooky season, right? We got oh, my boy. wife and I. We love we love Halloween time. We love the the whole month of October. We do scary movie. We do horror movie marathons every night. Uh, so I, we're we're really we love horror movies. We love Halloween especially. So I'm thinking giving you a little something spooky to watch. Okay, for the next, all right. For the next episode. How familiar are you with Alfred Hitchcock? Uh, pretty familiar. Psycho, uh, Vertigo, uh, you know, the other you've ones. Seen, so you've seen all the, the birds? <laughs> the birds, yep. You've seen, seen all that one. Yep. All right. <laughs> You're like, gosh, uh, darn it. Scratching that out of the list. <laughs> uh, I had Psycho here for you. But was, psycho. Okay. I love Psycho. Well, that's all right. I got a list I'm going down. So not Psycho. How about... The Evil Dead movies. I've never seen Evil Dead. Oh, okay. I would love to see the Evil. Well, I've seen the remake, the one from the two thousands, two thousand tens, I think. Nah, no, not that one. Yeah, don't, like, that's like. But I will say this: that one's scary. Like that one's actually pretty scary. It is pretty. It is actually. I did. I do remember enjoying it. Um, but like, but here, it, it, it took the more serious note, whereas right. this, the original is like more comedic, right? Right, right. So it's here we go. Rainy. So okay, I'm gonna challenge you to watch not Evil Dead one, what? but Evil. Hear me out on this. Evil Dead 2. Now, oh. you don't need to have seen Evil Dead 1 to watch Evil Dead 2, and I'll explain why. Basically, Sam Raimi made Evil Dead as kind of a very low budget, almost like a student film with Bruce Campbell, and it was very serious and it had a very serious take on, you know, um, in this movie. They eventually basically decided, let's remake that movie and make it into a dark comedy. So Mm. they essentially remade the movie. And even though the first movie has a cult following, Evil Dead 2 has an even bigger cult following. I feel like I'm accurate in saying that. I'll tell you what then. I'm going to add one and two to that. Okay. Because I feel like maybe it'll mean more to me if I I understand why they're going off of the first one like that. Because maybe there's a joke that that I don't catch, right? You Um, know what? That's if you if you are able to do that, if you want to do that, I will encourage you to do that. If anything, yeah, maybe to appreciate two even more. Yeah. So you watch one and then you watch two and then you could then then you can come back and we could talk about the differences and how you can compare them. All right. And my movie for you is The Monsters. 
Are no, you I'm just kidding. Ser- I'm oh kidding. I'm God. kidding. No. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. Oh, man. No, I'll, watch, I wanna... I'll go and watch Listen. the Munsters TV show. Listen, I can be cruel, but I can't be that cruel. All right. Oh, that's, God. That's, uh, that's, that's worse than, than a lot of things. All right. Damn um, you, Kevin. <laughs> have you ever heard of a movie called The 13th Ghost? I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. That was the first scary movie I ever saw as a kid. Mm. And I was horrified from that of that movie. I think I was like 12 or 11 or something like that, and my dad forced me to go to the theaters to watch it. And I remember having my shirt covering my face the entire movie because I couldn't look up and see anything because of how scary it was to me. And then as I got older, got into college, I tried to show somebody else this movie, and I thought it was one of the funniest and dumbest movies ever. And I want you to enjoy the same level of dumbness that I that I ex- experienced and enjoyed, Raul. Okay, 13 Ghosts. We challenge you to, to check out these movies as well and see what we think of it next month. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to... That's pretty much it. That's all we got today. With that, we made it to the end. Nice, uh, nice shorter episode. God, what a, what a way to end it. We're slowly getting down to two hours. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for listening, you guys. You can follow us on Instagram at Real Geek News. You can also follow our separate handles on Twitter and Insta at Kevin A. Rivera VO and Raul Ceballos VO. That's right. And hey, listen, if you want to help us uh, help the show get more listeners and help boost our profile and stuff, please go on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a good review because that helps kind of boost our, our podcast up the list and get more eyes on it. So we would really appreciate it if you do that. And also, if you guys want to send us a message, tell us, you know, Know, what what you love, what you want to hear. Is there a certain movie that might maybe you want to hear us review at some point in one of our bonus review episodes? Any kind of thoughts and opinions you want to share with us, please do. Send us an email at realgeeknews at gmail.com. And of course, we'll leave all the description below. With that all being said, stay safe, stay classy, and most important of all, stay geeky, my friends.